Why, hello there! Well, that was loud. Well, that was not intentional whatsoever. Well, this is what I get for starting next to a pew. Well, welcome everyone. Ruined! Absolutely ruined! This stream is awful. I should just end it now. <laughs> How are we doing, chat? Hey, Aerodynamism! Hey, Jerry Blue! Hey, Pantare! Hey to everybody! We all ready for another glorious playthrough of, a. Uh, this quaint little game, you may have heard of it by From Software, little known developer, I know, but they're also responsible for, you know, that, that totally <laughs> unremarkable title called Elden Ring. <laughs> you know, it only sold 15 million copies. Yeah, by those guys. And we will be continuing with this lore play. So last time we started out as a poor, lowly undead who had no, uh, no story to our name. We were just some random, nameless nobody who got locked up into a prison. Basically left to rot and die, going mad. But instead, someone helped us out. And we said, you know what, why not? I have no purpose to my existence. Let me just kind of go outside and kind of do things. And you know what? That decision, that whim to go on, helped us find a purpose. And that is to ring the bells of awakening. And embark in lear into learning the mission of the undead. A duty unique to us, cursed beings hated by the world. And so we're doing that. Very nice. As we can see here, we've infiltrated the town of these undead who have gathered here for the mission. At the top is the church managing the town from this parish. We can see how there are both areas for worship and upstairs areas for socializing and meetings and things like that in order to do day-to-day -day business for the town. They worship here a statue, which we said last time was a statue of Gwyn's wife holding an infant Guinevere. The point being is that baby Guinevere here is a bo goddess beloved by all. Her birth has been a boon to all of nature, whether it be man or beast. Crops, especially, as a harvest goddess. And, of course, a sword of war for her blessings to help warriors in combat. But things have gone wrong. We clearly see that there's been conflict at the Berg. Everyone's hollow. Things have gone to shit. Our mission, which is heralded here on these statues, these women holding, helmet, uh, holding staves with flame and helmets. We can see laurel wreaths representing victory on the doors here. As you can see, all of us giving us the intention that we should be escorted here and being given the proper rites and ceremonies for victory. Instead, we find ourselves navigating a ruin. This church is connected to the old church, linked to the Darkroot Garden. It's also linked to Sen's Fortress. And Orlando looms above, the castle with which we hope to one day enter. Completely niche stuff. Almost art house. <laughs> it's forgettable, really. Is volume good, guys? You can still hear me over the game pretty well, right? Just gotta make sure. Trying to make sure that we don't, uh... We don't have any, uh... Any technical hiccups on this. Anyway, let's continue on. First, I should, uh, uh, get my HUD back on. Yes. There we go. Now, as we can see, this, oh, right, I forgot you're up here. I mean, if you're just gonna let me. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Oh, well. He messed up too, though. Come on. There we go. I should just hit him when he blocks like that. There we go. 
Volume's good. Perfect. Thanks. I'm glad to know. Oh. Ah. We also killed the Evangelist of Sea, who had taken up residence here and uh, had a little congregation going. Obviously, all the citizens who run to the parish for sanctuary during this trying time of conflict. We're looking for some spirituality. And they found it in the Mad Gods uh, preachers. Oh, no. I'm gonna die. Oh. Ooh. I'm not dead! Yeah! Two-handing right now is best against these people. Ouch. I wonder if it'd be good to have my uh, my dagger on the other hand, because it might be better in certain cases. Good, volume's good. Very happy to see that. Okay. Now we're not going here, we're not going there. I want to go back here. Now the evangelist here... Seems to have been taking advantage of the situation in order to add some converts. Plus, hey, no easier way to procure specimens than when there's a conflict going on and nobody's going to stop you. Oh. oh. Dang. Oh, wow. Well, that went wrong. Sorry, Lutrek. Gonna take another life. <laughs> uh, let's see if Andre has anything new to say. He might have stuff to talk about us. So, off stream, I did get some of Andre's smithing tools and things, so he might have something worthwhile to tell to us about. Well. Oh, Andre. This is the old church. Yeah. It was abandoned in favor of the church that you passed through. Right, the new one was built, they abandoned uh, it, naturally. From here to forbidden so there's forbidden lands. Uh huh. They attract all sorts of lunatics. No one that's cultured as yourself. Uh huh. It's fine to be undead, but keep a level head. Now, his joke doesn't really translate well into English, so they kind of changed up everything. So what he's saying, basically, is that there's two forbidden regions that we uh, connected to this old church connected to the parish. Darkroot Garden or the Garden of the Black Forest. It's not actually literally called Darkroot or anything. It's literally just like, hey, it's a black forest, I guess because it's at night and stuff right now. And, well, it's a gar garden because, well, we'll see with the Ulysseal DLC. Um... The other area, of course, is Sen's Fortress. Now, Fortress means something like uh, Old Castle type of deal. But we kind of get the same idea. Like, it's an old, ancient fort type of thing. Who's Sen? Probably one of the gods. But it should be noted that the name Sen, quote-unquote, um, is the same term in Japanese that means, like, war, battle, things of that nature. So there's an obvious pun there. Anyway. The point is, is that uh, Andre is telling us, Hey, uh, it's not a place for you to go in there. Uh, no decent undead, he's basically saying, would uh, be caught dead in those places. But then his joke is sort of like, hey, but not like I've ever met a decent undead, eh? And he's, that's why he's so laughing. Because the idea, of course, is is that decent, he means in terms of cases of, uh, you know, you're, not, you're right in the head. There's nothing wrong with you. You're sane. But, and this is something that's used constantly, where characters will say, like, for example, Patch's favorite line, like, uh, well, you look reasonably sane. Uh, that's, again, him saying, again, you look decent. Um, now, the point, of course, being here is that um, undead are cursed beings who are unholy abominations, right? They shouldn't exist, according to the mainstream religion here. So he's saying, like, not like I've ever seen a decent undead, right? So it's like we're intrinsically indecent beings. So they kind of change that up because it doesn't quite flow as well. It loses the meaning, but I can at least understand that uh, choice. 
Uh, actually, we should see if he has anything else to say about Dark Root Garden or Sens or whatever. Well, uh, you, me. Yes. Anything else? Sens Fortress is an old building plan developed by the ancient gods. Yep. It is the only route leading to the great Anor Londo. Of course, the most prudent kind of men find their way into that fortified death trap. But they won't stop trying. So you get the idea that Andre does not treat uh, Katarina knights very well because they have an onion-shaped armor. And there's also the idea, of course, that people are trying to get into Sen's Fortress, but you can't really get into it normally. And so right now, people don't really know how they're supposed to get in, but they're going to keep trying. Then there's the idea that, of course, we're all that we're, Sen's Fortress was essentially well, used to be owned by the gods. It's now used as a, uh, a path of traps so we can get to An Orlando. So hey, want to go through a trapped fort in a uh, trapped castle in order to make it to the tr castle up there well you could try i know little of the dark root garden although i've heard rumors of the divine blacksmith who resides there those who get stumped in the catacombs seek him for divine weapons so again we get the idea that dark root garden is not a place that you know a lot about but hey, apparently there's a, a blacksmith uh, of the clergy, who's a cleric blacksmith, who's uh, gone out there and can make you some cleric weapons. So hey, want to go get a holy weapon that can deal with skeletons? Well, you go there if you want to get through the catacombs. I know little oh. of those, those who get... It's not going to tell us any more there. Okay. Yep. And again, as I've said previously, the idea... We have references of An Orlando as a, uh, a country... A castle and a country. Oh, sorry, I said, said that twice. No, uh, a country, a castle, and, like, uh, a city. So, again, the idea that uh, we see established in Dark Souls from the very beginning, the idea that countries in this series are more like city-states for the most part. A lot of these places seem to be just one big capital, and that's kind of the extent of it. Um, and obviously the castle illusion, it's more so a castle in the sense of a lord's castle compared to Sen's Fortress, which is just, like, a generic term for castle. So the idea is, of course, that Obviously, with the fortified walls and stuff, you can see why the city might be considered a castle of sorts with how everything is set up. It's almost like a, a castle city, a citadel. Oh. Dang it. Come on. Alright, next up. Nice. Now, of course, though, that does give us the idea that uh, Sen's Fortress is essentially used as a kind of checkpoint, it seems, because if you could get into, if you're trying to emigrate, uh, immigrate into or emigrate out of An Orlando, uh, you'd have to then go through some sort of border control type of scenario. So it's like, okay, well... They built seemingly sense fortress for that purpose then, before it became this path of traps. Now, as we'll learn, there's more to it than just that, but suffice to say that gives us kind of a, a logical idea of how this land has, of Lordran, has quite a history to it before the undead town came here. And it's like, hey, now it's a trial ground of sorts where you can go through the traps. Oh, that's fine. Now, oh, there you guys are. Oh, I didn't see you. You came from behind. Oh. Now you brought the posse. Dang it. I 
whiffed it. Oh, I whiffed it again. I'm messing up the the timings. There we go. Now I got my uh, my spacing right. <laughs> Boulder Knight's like, even in death, I shall cling to you. It's like, no, get off my leg. Damn hollows, they never truly die. <laughs> no one's gonna sneak up on me, right? Ah, dang it, I didn't do the... I can never do it when I want to. I mean... Oh, you're not done. I was about to say, like, it looked like you were. Perfect. Thanks, buddy. Now, as you can see, door easily broken. Now, we had a key that we acquired in the, the mess hall area. That would let us find this cell. So again, we get the idea that the people who worked up here would go down to eat outside the church uh, on break or what have you. Hang around. Now we get the, the key to this cell they have back here. Oh my. Unfortunate. So he's mentioning when he's saying duties, it's again the same term when we talk about our undead mission. So again, he's giving the idea that, oh, I have a mission, I have a mission, it's very important. And it's like, oh, okay, you have a mission like us, that's cool. Yeah. I'm certain you stand to benefit, yep. Now we get the idea here clearly, this church was designed in a way so that way it could even hold criminals if necessary to detain people. So if there's ever a dispute in the town or whatever, it's like, okay, let's detain this person and hold them until we can have them judged. You can imagine almost like an open court session where they sort of bring the defendant, have everyone gather in town, sort of bring up witnesses and things, sort of have an informal judicial proceeding. With the, the, the parishioners of the town essentially... Uh, acting as uh arbiters but this guy i mean he's telling us even though he's locked in here they didn't do it i mean there's that evangelist there and they're apparently as we will later learn abductors so maybe they just you know are holding him here to take him away as another specimen for seed i mean that sounds awful we should let him out I see. Just be prudent. Allow him some time. You got nothing on you? you? Got nothing to cough up? Ah, uh, I should have extorted you through the bars. Why am I a nice thief? Ah, uh, this is the problem of being a penitent thief. I'm trying to be a man of God now. <laughs> I wonder what kind of food they had in Lord's Room when people were about. And clearly it doesn't do a good job of keeping its prisoners because regardless if you have the key, Lotrex still gets out. I mean, have you looked at this door? It's looking pretty rusty. I think with enough force and a little bit of uh, jimmying, you could definitely uh, take this off its hinges. Clearly, the church needs to invest in new infrastructure. Uh, in terms of food, we do get some idea that of uh, with Dark Root Garden and stuff around that they probably ate some stuff natural. Though, unfortunately, most Souls games don't give us an idea of um, farming or anything like that, right? Like... Lothric's world building is great until you get the idea of where the hell does it get its food because there are no farms. And this is another problem with the city-state uh, set up to countries around here is that it sort of doesn't leave a lot of room to give you an idea of, oh yeah, there should be like fields of stuff. I think Dark Souls 2 is the only game that actually kind of explores that notion with Drang Link. The idea of being you dead and just waiting for a century for the bars to rest. <laughs> being undead, I'm assuming you mean. Yeah, the... Just waiting for uh, stuff to go down. But speaking of uh, prisoners and the uh, justice system, we're going to start getting an idea of how that works out very shortly. First, though, let's head down.
We got some humanity we can use on our uh, bonfires in the near future. Now again, one thing that's worth noting about this lift is this lift likely predates the uh, church of which it's... Oh, whoopsie. It likely predates the church of which uh, it sits upon. That reason can be told from the iconography. If you look closely, you will notice a certain symbol, or symbols, I should say, that are on here. The ones around on the flooring are the same symbols that we see in An Orlando proper. It has the. It seems to be a generic stock image, but we also see this image reused in Dark Souls Three and even in the Ulysses DLC, and it gives us the general idea of a sun, or should I say, a blossoming flower within a uh, sun imagery. It's a little hard on this one, but we'll see it in other areas where it's more uh, distinct. But it sort of gives the idea, again, of associating Anor Londo with flowers and the sun. Something to note for future streams. You also may notice this imagery. The circles sort of intersecting with a kind of star shape and other, like, four circle area. This is notable because if we were to look closely... Hey, you still waiting, buddy? Thanks. Thanks so much for telling me how to do gestures. Very important information. We'll talk with you in a second. Uh, let's have her upgrade our stuff. Oh, hey! How'd you get down here? Before us. That was fast. <laughs> Again, this is why I do not take uh, much stock into how characters manage to get around. Uh, I don't factor that into my analysis for Abyssal Archive because, uh, yeah, stuff like this happens and it's like, okay, whatever. Time is stagnant, I guess. They found a way. He went through the secret, he went through the secret, uh, hole shoot down in the back of the church that lets you just kind of, like, take a zippy ride all the way down here. So we have a Firekeeper Soul. Which will let us... Ah, oh, I didn't check the, the description for that. Oh, well, we'll do that in the future. But as we can see, we can trust the Firekeeper to be able to take the soul of her kin and uh, mold it into our flask. So much like how the Dark Legend... Again, not the Dark Tales, but a Dark Legend references. There's this idea, again, that even in death, the Firekeepers will protect the Bonfire Flame. Which is what Estes is. It is Liquid Bonfire Flame. Or I should say Bonfire fire Heat, specifically. We'll be heading down to you soon, Blight Town. But again, uh, come on, running. There we go. As we can see here, though, the exact same imagery used for New Londo is the one used for the lift up to the old church. So we get the idea that when this was part of New Londo and not the ruins of just Firelink Shrine. Oh God, what's our? We're having a. Uh, Having weird technical difficulties for a moment there. There we go. All, all settled. Anyway, before this was, uh, before the new Londo went to ruin and Firelink Shrine became like this, it seems to be the idea that this was this lift here on the side was an extension of new Londo as. Oh my good. Uh oh. Uh oh. Having uh, technical difficulties, I was hoping we wouldn't have when we were leaving the stream. All right. Anyway, so we get the idea that these lifts likely existed even back before the church was set up, and that when this church infrastructure was installed, they built it around the existing lifts. Now, this is notable because again gives us the idea that the lifts had a direct connection to Sen's fortress, and thus could connect to. Um, New Londo and Anor Londo. Now, obviously, the name New Londo itself is very curious. Anor Londo in uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, Elvish, essentially, means something like the Haven of the Sun, uh, which is very relevant considering Anor Londo is the home of Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, the King of Sun, the Sun's Light. And then you have uh, New Londo, which means essentially. Uh, the Japanese for new is more accurately a small, and it comes to this connotation of being a small or lesser haven. So, you have the idea that essentially these undead lived in a ruin at the foot 
of Anne Orlando, uh, and it was sort of like the small haven uh, for them, and obviously the term small will be relevant in other respects, as we will see going forward, while uh, much like how today now the Undead Burg similarly sits at the foot of Anne Orlando. So, very, very interesting. Yeah, the, the most we get are those gardeners from the DLC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't really get much on in terms of uh, in terms of world building for uh, cultivation. Don't get much. All right, uh, we should yeah head forward. So we're not going to the catacombs until we get our holy uh, holy weapons. So nice. All right, I think it's time I try I try jumping. You done, Mr. Grenade Boy? Ow! No, you're not. Ow. Oh, this is gonna... There we go. Now this guy comes down. And he's dead. Okay. Alright, I think it's time I try the, the jump thing here. Do we know the original name of the Undead Burg? Uh, no. As far as we know, it's just the Undead Town below the castle. If it had a name, um, it's never discussed in the script. And we'll probably now never know. Maybe it's something that Miyazaki had thought of, but he just never, uh, put into, to writing. That's always possible. But, uh, he has never shared it, so. As far as we're aware, it had no name. Now, this isn't unprecedented, as we'll later see in Dark Souls 3, that's also a quote-unquote undead town that doesn't have any other known name. It's just the undead town. So again, the undead town below the castle and Dark Souls 1, and then Dark Souls 3 makes reference to this by just creating the quote-unquote undead town. So, and this is the undead settlement as it's localized, so just for comparison. So technically, Dark Souls has had two undead burgs. <laughs> Uh, is Anne Orlando a localization name, or does the JP reference in Darren 2? Well, El Henibre, uh, you're, yes, the, the localization is just using the Japanese name. So, yes, it is, in fact, written as Anne or, or, uh, Rondo, so, that is, in fact, um, that is, in fact, a, uh, a Japanese rendering of the Sindarin. Uh, again, I also referenced earlier Thorland. And how Thorland would be more accurately rendered, uh, I think it was last stream, would be more accurately rendered as Solondo um, instead of Thorland. Again, the localization got really creative with that, with translating that name, so it's not quite accurate to the original Katakana. But again, the idea is essentially a Solondo or a Haven of the Sun, except in this time, Sol, the Latin uh, for Sun, is used instead of Anor, the, the Sindarin. So again, we have the idea that there's um, All Father Lloyd in Thorland. The, the current leader of the gods is um, has his own sort of An Orlando in the world of man. Versus, of course, Gwyn's quote-unquote An Orlando, where he was the leader of the gods, you know, before he went to become Lord of Cinder. Alright, we shall now continue forward. And if you asked him the original name, he would be laughs. <laughs> he would just laugh, yeah. It's just like that place in town where uh, where all the houseless people set up their tents. Lord, Lord, yeah, Lordran's just like the place under Anne Orlando. They're just like, hey, undead are here. Okay, they can just like set up tent like out here. We don't care. No, but. Uh, that isn't quite the the lore, so we'll we'll go into that more going forward. But let us let us continue with how we are going. So if it's both the fact that it's more human in language and Roman Catholicism, yeah, there's a uh, yeah, there's an obvious uh, there's an obvious like disconnect there um, because obviously we see a lot of Latin terms uh, like Petrus, for example, is if I recall correctly a Greek or Latin version of the name for Peter. So we see a lot of. Uh, a uh, lot of sort of Greco-Roman influence in Thorland and uh, the Way of White in general. For example, take the Undead Parish. There's a very Greco-Roman flair to that place. 
So, you can kind of see how a lot of that seems to factor in. Oh, we don't have to worry about this here. It feels great to be more powerful, doesn't it, everyone? You done? You done hiding? Oh, okay. Oh! That was a leap. Let's rest here first and add more uh, flasks. So, uh, yeah. Let's, re let's restore our humanity. And then, uh, bottomless box. Do we have anything we want to put in you? God, this, this menu is so weird. Gosh, I'm so glad later games exist. I'm pretty happy with everything we got so far. We want to keep that. Uh, we don't need a crossbow, I don't think. I can reinforce my stuff at will now. So we're good when we go down to Blight Town. Uh, we don't want to do that quite yet. Uh, let's reverse hollowing and then kindle. The opening cinematic shows a lot of buildings in the rings of walls around Anor Orlando during the Age of Fire. Are those meant to be New Londo or Undead Berg? That's just supposed to be a generic human city. It's not around or in Anor Orlando. There's no real, like, recognizable landmarks related to Anor Orlando in the cinematic there. It's just supposed to give you the idea that the Age of Fire began. It's just showing you a human, a, you know, a prosperous human city above ground. That's the idea there. That's what modern, that's what the world of man today looks like. Versus, of course, how there's now, it's in a metaphorical night where the undead curse runs rampant. Uh, offer humanity and kindle flame. Yep. Now again, as I talked about last time, we can see how the bonfires serve as a means to make us offer our humanity to maintain our human form, to avoid hollowing. Uh, obvious, for obvious reasons, because we don't want to go insane. But there's also, of course, this idea that we are giving up our dark soul. Okay. Anything else we want to... Um, do we want to do more? If I recall, yeah, I can't do more until we get to uh, until we get to the secret, right? So it's fine. There we go. Woo. Yeah. Now, as we can see here, we're going back to see our undead merchant friend. Because he was just such a swelled guy. And he has a key I want. Go on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Alright, we don't have uh, Dark Souls 3, uh, Dark Souls 3, uh, go for the front type, huh? can only do normal attacks. Gotcha. Uh, let's get rid of you before you possibly become a problem. There you go. Scaredy cat. I always thought the flyover was during the heyday of the Age of Fire, but that wouldn't make sense if it's showing the Berg and the Berg is a newer place. No, uh, like I said, just not, it's not, it's a, it's, it's, it's in the world of man. It's not even around or related to Anor Orlando. So no worries there. Do you see the fake leaks about DS4 taking place in the age of the deep sea a few weeks ago? Uh, fake leaks, right? Yeah, I can totally imagine that would be something a fake leaker does. Cause they don't understand the narrative of Dark Souls, uh, for like the deep is obviously a serious problem in the drag heap and stuff like that, but we would never have an age of deep seas if there was a hypothetical Dark Souls 4. I'm going to just say that right now. A lot of possibilities if there was a theoretical Dark Souls 4, which by the way, I'm hoping there will never be, but, uh, definitely not that. Another quest line, uh, question, sorry, quest line, question. You, you know, my quite these questions you guys give me kind of are quest lines in a way. They're like, uh... They're like, uh, uh, conversation quests. Uh, do you, 
Uh, do undead stave off hollowing with humanity or souls? It seems like the player needs humanity, but NPCs, merchants mostly want souls. Both. So, souls help feed the curse. So, if you want to stay... So, again, like we talked about, there's two ways for you to hollow. There's you dying, because obviously when you die, you have given up on living. Like, your soul has given up on living, mostly because, you know, you're you're bleeding out, you know, you're, you know, you're, it just, it becomes, your body becomes non uh, non-operable. So you quote you quote unquote give up. That's why when we increase our our uh, we're increasing stuff like our vitality. We're increasing our now they call this vigor in later uh, installments. But the idea is that you're we're increasing our our life power versus say our resistance here, which is like your body power, your body strength. So we're increasing the strength of our life, our actual force of our soul to keep living. That's how we have more HP and stuff. We're able to uh, take more. Uh, our so we're able to take more before our soul gives up on life, right? And when we, again, I talked about this idea how a loss of will, again, you being quote-unquote crestfallen or heartbroken, which evokes this idea that you just lose the will to go on, you have this sense of, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to now hollow then, because my, the, the, the undead curse, my dark side is now going to start gobbling up my, my white soul, we'll call it, the white soul, as we'll call it, that'll be your, the soul that you've cultivated your memories and your personality in, so that's one way to hollow, the other is, as we say, you just losing will, you're alive, but you've sort of given up on living anyway, so even though you haven't physically died, you're, go you've kind of had, you're already going through a sort of mental death, so therefore you're going to slowly hollow in that way too, now to stave off that, that inevitable hollowing, you try to, one, keep your spirits up, you always keep the faith, you have hope, you want a purpose in life, you just don't want to lose hope and succumb to despair. And another thing is that you want souls, because hey, even if you resist it with a strong will, those souls are still going to get slowly gnawed at by your curse, right? This is the, the the existential terror of hollowing. It's always happening and going on, and you can only resist it for so long. So you want souls to help stave off the curse. But again, when you're already hollow, but you haven't quite lost it, that's when you want to perform the rite of kindling at the bonfires in order to stave it off. Now, this rite sort of goes by the wayside in later games, Dark Souls 2, because um, knowledge about souls and bonfires is practically non-existent in the world of man, where Dark Souls 2 takes place. Um, they instead do the human effigy thing, where you just look at an effigy that reminds you of your dark soul and stuff like that, and sort of helps you reclaim in your head uh, uh, humanity, and your character, for some reason, when they have this moment, constantly crushes it in their hands so you can't use it again. It's like, god darn it. <laughs> Can't you learn to like have a lighter grip, <laughs> or maybe just drop it when you're get, when you're feeling it? Come on, that humanity resurgence. <laughs> anyway, uh, besides Dark Souls two dumb things, uh, and then Dark Souls three, of course, it just doesn't bother with the, the mechanic because it's focusing on a lot of other things instead. Anyway, let's talk to our friend here. There you are. Still keeping your marbles all together. Hey, Sneed, welcome in. Go ahead. Don't be initiative. Also, oh wait, Sneed, that was you, not Ellie, who's been making all these questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what I get for not looking at avatars and names. <laughs> anyway, uh. Wanted to hear you rant about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know too much about it, unfortunately, Sneed. They said there would be underwater stuff and swimming because of the deep sea. Funny as shit. <laughs> okay, that, that is the funniest shit. Especially if you read Abyssal Archive, because at the end, I do talk. I kind of touch on the idea that we can't swim, and there may be lore reasons to that. Uh, we'll discuss that more as we go through this playthrough, but... <laughs> Uh, it's the age of deep sea, so there's obviously going to be water. Wow, wow, just... Ah, uh, these leakers, they truly, truly... As if you couldn't be more obvious, you're fake. Oh, this one. So he's talking about the person, he's, he, the thing he's petting? Her name is Yulia. She's done in love with me. I'm sure, man. She'd never leave my side, now would you, Yulia? Again, we get the idea that he looks hollow and he's clearly going insane, but he hasn't, re he's, you know, hollowing is a gradient. So he's not totally out of it yet. He's not like a mindless bleh, 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 zombie type of guy, right? He's just kind of like, oh, I'm kind of kooky. <laughs> right? So with all of that in mind, we're going now with the idea that he seems to think he has like a pet dog or something. Because later if you attack him, he'll be like, oh, sick him, Yulia. Now, if those wondering, yes, Yulia is also, can also be translated as Yuria. Because Japanese has a, uh, Japanese doesn't really have an L sound. They mostly pronounce the R sound. So it's like it would be Yuria. And then um, uh, whenever they're rendering names in like Western stuff, whenever they're, re we, uh, sorry, uh, rendering Western names, uh, usually they will use R sounds to substitute for L sounds. So it can be translated either way. And obviously that's a reference to Demon Souls and of course would later be reused again in Dark Souls 3. And we almost had an Elden Ring for Fia, but I guess Miyazaki decided, nah, I'm going to give her her own name. <laughs> Uh, 
Hey, Ellie. Now, now this is the real Ellie. I'm sorry, Ellie. I, I, I gotta look at you and Sneed's uh, names and avatars more often so I can distinguish you. The, the classic reason for undead not being able to swim is that their body disintegrates underwater in World of Warcraft. <laughs> we go down and our body just... Poof. Yeah, that doesn't really work in Dark Souls because our bodies, at least when we're not hollow, are uh, just normal human bodies for the most part. So, yeah, we can't really use that justification, but that would be funny, I will admit. Uh, let's get our key now. So this is the residence key. Now, there's this a very interesting idea that this key is for the private homes. So everyone has their own private residence, right, that they can live in. It's their personal place. But it seems to be a standard key that can open basically a bunch of the different homes. This is interesting because it tells us the idea that uh, you, uh, you ex aren't exactly safe. Um... And you aren't exactly safe because you hollow. So, um, what is the community supposed to do if, say, uh, Grandma hollows in her home? Well, we can take the key, unlock it, our unlock it ourselves, or even lock it ourselves and board it all up. So that way, okay, that hollow's now uh, quarantined, right? And we can see how there's been d construction boarding up homes and stuff like that uh, around town. So we get the idea, then, that the Undead Berg does sort of... Uh, does have sort of like systems in place where it's like okay you have your own personal home but in case there's ever a problem or whatever we can get in or make sure you can't get out as a mad monster right so all that works oh you again i hope you've brought plenty of soul <laughs> <laughs> oh you can forget it i'm all that she needs uh-huh careful she bites your little fingers off be kind yulia be kind <laughs> So again, he thinks he has a dog here that uh, loves him a lot. Though again, it's possible that he's not completely crazy. He may have had a dog, as we'll see. A bunch of dogs exist in the lower undead burg, which, as you may recall, I said that this merchant quite obviously comes from there. Both in terms of just being a clear beggar who's a little too uh, poor for this neighborhood and seems to have come up to steal all the rich people's stuff up here in order to uh, sell to get some souls. But uh, besides the obvious fact that he's a beggar... Um, there's uh there's the fact that he mentions how the Capra demon uh had the nerve to go down. So he's particularly angry about that, which makes sense because obviously if you have a demon that's moved in down below where you live, it kind of has to force you out and you can't go back. So again, the small details, they can tell you a lot about a character. Now, we can open this. Huh. Now this is curious. The description does not tell us too much in this regard. But it's a uh, it's a shield and it's decorated with the image of a white dragon, which is very odd because as you may recall, we only know of one white dragon, Seath. So it's a shield depicting a white dragon likely representing Seath doing on a corpse down here. Now I talked previously about clearly we see this idea that the uh the 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 art the berg army is paranoid we can see firelink shrine all the way over there with the aqueduct and stuff we can see how they were completely paranoid about an outside threat that they would even station troops outside the aqueduct to make sure no one could sneak in through the aqueduct so they had this idea that there was some threat that would be coming in and dealing with us but here's a thought what if that threat was organized outside but where did it come from well if there's any army, it's this isn't just random citizens hollowing with arrows and all that. There was some sort of army here. Now, what happens if there was an uh, sort of attack f uh, formed from soldiers, or, or should I say citizens on the inside, building up their own army to uh, take over or take back the Berg, in their estimation, from those here? And that they were... Uh, uh, aligned with Seath. This again, as we see with the evangelist in the church, would line up very well with that, of the evangelist taking over the church from the inside and sort of taking control. It quite possibly is that this was, uh, the conflict and all the hollowing we see here may have been an inside job, as it were. Something to keep in mind as we go forward. I will be bringing this back, this idea of essentially a civil war between a bunch of Seath fanatics and the Berg regulars in the future.
Capper must have stolen his dog. He named his dog Yuri. <laughs> the man is petting his barrel. Leave him be. The landlord was too cheap to buy more than one lock. The deepest lore. Oh. Oh. I can't believe I could dodge roll that, to be honest. Oh. I thought he was coming down. Oh, well. You done there, buddy? Anytime. Does the Japanese call the six eye channelers evangelists? Yes, Ellie. We talked about this uh, last stream. Yes, the channelers are evangelists. Um, it's not the same term for evangelist you're familiar with in Dark Souls 3. I also clarified that. The evangelist in Dark Souls 3, they mean like, uh, the term means more like a preacher. So, uh, in Dark Souls 3, there's the idea that, you, um, again, they're like the faith gurus. They're the person who give you the teachings of the faith, right? Um, so it's very similar to evangelist. You might even consider it synonymous. But uh, it is a different term. And then the term in Japanese for the channelers is more accurately just evangelist, really. Yeah. Someone who uh, proselytizes about the good word of Seath in this case. I hate you. You're you're not a you're not a good dragon. I, what we should do honestly is go to the bonfire there and then go back up. <laughs> you can't touch the fire. It apparently spawns from the ground up. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let's uh, let's get the dragon to go away. Oh, no, oopsie, wrong way. All right. Anytime, Hellkite. Thank you. Thank you. You done? Oh no, he's just going back up. Oh yeah, he's flying away. Good, good. I was like, wait a second. The Hellkite's like, well, so again, as we can see, as soon as we uh, actually enter this area, Hellkite's like, well, I failed. Maybe uh, we'll get him next time. Mission failed. Uh, so again. I go back to my point about how all of this seems to revolve around protecting this area here with all the shrine worshippers, even though, unfortunately, they have all hollowed. Though, hey, Hellkite was told just to protect them, not to make sure they were still sane. Not a Drake Sword playthrough. We might get the Drake Sword later on. Uh, just I don't want to do it like at this level. I don't want to, like, have to buy, like, a hundred or whatever, like, uh, arrows and, like, shoot them from a corner at a tail. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Ah, uh, nice, so it doesn't have the negative baggage attached to it. Yeah. Whatever, whatever negative baggage comes with the term channeler. Uh, it's a bit strange Seath and Calamite don't interact at all, given in their answers to the whole conflict of FromSoft's original games. Yeah, that is kind of funny, right? But then again, we know that Calamite, the one-eyed dragon idea, the one-eyed, I guess it was, I guess it was kind of black even in cut content. Um, there, it, there's no denying that the one-eyed uh, dragon cut content idea did exist for a time. Uh, so, uh, during development... And then, obviously, it was cut, and then they brought it back for the DLC and made Calamite his own character. So I think it was just a matter of they may have had an idea originally, but then they couldn't uh, make it fit by the t uh, into the final game. And then they were just kind of like, or they couldn't finish the boss, maybe, and that sort of forced them to cut whatever they were planning. And by the time the DLC rolled around, they didn't really have any good way to tie it into Seath directly. I mean, I guess they could have, like, added some items to be like, ah, yeah, he was like a rival for Seath when he was still alive or whatever. But it's like, eh. 
Like, it seems kind of stupid and unnecessary at that point. Like, it just doesn't kind of work with what we got in the final game. Now, as we can see, we have now climbed all the way down from the walls to here. Now, again, we're still by the bridge, so if we climb up here... Open the most inconveniently set up gate in the world. Like, imagine being like, oh, I gotta go head down here. Okay, let me open this gate and then, like, shimmy on around. I'm just saying, not the most, uh, not the most elegant setup. Oh, dang. There we go. All right. Let's uh, do our level ups first. Oh. Ow. Ow. There we go. Alright, what do I want? Level up. I think more HP is good at, still at this juncture. Yep. Is Hellkite the same in Japanese, or is that some gibberish localization made? That's also something I talked about last stream, Ellie. The, the Hellkite is the name. It's not the species of the dragon. So it's not a Hellkite Drake. It's a wyvern or flying dragon um, named Hellkite. So Hellkite is, in fact, the name of the beast. So again, the creature has a name, giving us the idea it's not just some random mindless dragon or something like that. It's essentially a quote-unquote person in, in a way. Same as Seath or Calamite. So again, if, if Seath the Scaleless is White Dragon Seath and Black Dragon Calamite is, well, Black Dragon Calamite, then Hellkite Drake is Flying Dragon uh, Hellkite. And yes, that's written in Katakana, so that is, in fact, the name as it would be uh, written and pronounced. If you can use Tail free time with Gold Pine Resin and now break it off easy, ooh, that's good to know. Like, make him fly down and charge him with the Hand Axe. Uh, can you do that with arrows, too? Because with arrows, we might be able to uh, to make that work really easy. But we'll, I guess we'll see. There we go. All right, let's go have our fun exploring down here. Now, this is where we enter the lower undead bird. As I said last stream, the idea here is that we have the undead town below the castle, then the undead town's lower stratum, and then finally the depths, or the quote-unquote lowest stratum. So we get the idea that, of course, this is a place that is physically below, but it also has, of course, this double meaning of, obviously, there are quote-unquote lesser people, to put it uh, unkindly, that live here. Again, we see the dogs. Now, when we acquired the key to this area, we were told something very important. Where's basement key? Now, again, basement key is, again, the lower stratum key. Uh, so, again, leads to the... Uh, tells about the bridge and stuff. Now, this has been incredibly shortened. So, the narrow passes lean below at the far face of the bridge and the undead bird. Again, it's all telling us that we're going to the lower stratum. But the, uh, the underlying meaning is the... Is the... Oh. We have the idea that the lower undead berg, this lower stratum, is a treacherous place. Uh, uh, do not turn your back to the wily thieves or the wild dogs who serve the Capra demon. Now, the Japanese more accurately says sort of like the the, the idea is that you have these... Uh, the idea is the when they say serve the Capra demon, they mean both the thieves and the dogs are quote-unquote subordinates. It's not just talking about the dogs. So there's the idea of like, okay, uh, worry about the subordinates like the dogs or the thieves... Uh, who will stab you in the back. So again, this is just sort of giving us a preview of what we're going to see in the area. And as we can see, there are dogs, but we haven't seen the thieves. So the wild dogs more often means um, like stray or, uh, you know, like just sort of dogs that live on the street. Um, we also learned that there are dogs which the Capra Demon personally owns in his boss battle. Somebody, please let me out of here. Somebody, anybody, 
help me. Unlock the door. Damn, I'm finished. How did this ever happen? Wow, he 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 went from please somebody help. Ah, well, damn, I'm done. <laughs> the hokey acting in Dark Souls One is in some ways charming, honestly, in a very Narm sort of way. Now, as we can see here, there is a uh, a mob. A bunch of, uh, no pitchforks, but definitely torches. <laughs> uh, mobbers on this side of town. So as we can see where the dogs and the thieves are is all this area that the Capra Demon is in control of. Obviously, the fact that the Capra Demon has these guys as subordinates tells us that this de these demons are not just monsters. They are intelligent beings who can, in fact, communicate and organize with other entities, such as the human thieves. Now... As we can tell, he seems to have taken over as kind of the mob boss of the area. The thieves now do his bidding, and the dogs are out there patrolling on his behalf. So, we can see here a bunch of citizens who probably are not very happy with this, having formed a mob. Now, as we can see, a bunch of them are surrounding that corpse there. We'll talk about that corpse in a second. Oh. Oh, thank God, you have a normal hitbox, unlike the Elden Ring Torch mobs. It's like, oh, no. Now, again, as we can see, they're surrounding this person. Was this person someone who was against the fighting and didn't want these mobbers to do what they were doing? Was this person aligned with the Capra Demon? Who knows? Either way, they ganged up and uh, did not-so-nice things to her, as we can see. Again, I say her because... Again, we get twin humanities and can see from the corpse model that it's a woman with a, a little bra protecting her breasts here. Again, there are male and female models in this game to help distinguish the characters. And uh, we received twin humanities. Now, going forward, we're going to see that twin humanities will be found more often than not on women's corpses or obtained from women. It may not be obvious going first, but I promise you the evidence will mount as we continue going forward. And then we can see, like, waterways and things here, helping foreshadow some of the depths and stuff like that. Uh, hey, Guts! I think you're new here. Welcome in. Good to see you. Uh, nice. I'll have to watch this uh, later. Can't wait for the book, man. Uh, Guts! So, you know, the book uh, Abyssal Archive is, in fact, available, the uh, digital edition. So, again, if you haven't pre-ordered the physical standard edition yet, uh, you can also consider getting the digital uh, again, if you pre-ordered it back in August when that uh, campaign was being done, when we first uh, announced it, uh, consider uh, checking your email. There should be an email already sent to you with links and instructions on how you can get your free digital bundle with your pre-order. Otherwise, please uh, check the official uh, check the link in the description. Go to the official store page for the publisher, and you'll be able to find the uh, physical and standard. Uh, 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 sorry, the the physical standard edition and the uh, digital bundle, uh, both uh, uh, both for sale on there. So you can always get reading right away if you really want to read it in some format. But if you can't wait for a digital, if you don't like reading digital, if you need to get your physical copy, you're going to have to wait until uh, next year. It'll probably be about like three, four, maybe five months, who knows. We'll, we'll have more details for you as soon as we, uh, as soon as we can give them. Again, economy being what it is and uh, everything, uh, publishers working tirelessly to make sure that we uh, get everything printed as soon as possible to ship out to you guys. Uh, uh, the terrifying and unpredictable Torch Hollows. I don't think you can add resin to a bowstring, to be honest. I've never tried. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Now that you mention it, you probably can't. But, you know, I was just thinking. I'd love it if you could. The terrifying and unpredictable torch hollows, they're not as bad as in Elden Ring. In Elden Ring, it's like you go, like, anywhere near that torch. Like, you go within, like, a five-mile radius, and it'll somehow hit you. <laughs> that Elden Ring torches are freaking scar have scarred me. <laughs> I see, like, Dark Souls torches now, and I'm like, oh, those are cute. Uh, is the second humanity an unborn child? Uh, no. So... Uh, twin humanities seem to just be an idea where you have two humanities and they sort of create a sort of bond link to each other, as we can see in the graphic. See? Uh, so they sort of, like, have this thing where they seem to have this gravitational association with each other. Now, you may ask yourselves, well, if, Loki, if you're saying that these are found mostly within women, why would women have this? Now, first off, it isn't just humanity. This likely happens with regular souls, too. Um... And this is because we can actually see non-human women also have uh, twin humanities in this game. 
So there is this idea that just the act of these souls being collected and stored in the bodies of these women, uh, the way that we can take out uh, soul, our souls, or as we see with like Gwyn or the Lords, etc., um, this allows them to essentially kind of have sort of a split dual nature to it. Why does this effect happen with women? If my, uh, my conclusion would be that it has to deal with uh, women's unique capacity for childbirth, the idea being is that if you can bear a child, um, the idea is that you not only have to worry about your soul, but also the child's soul. So women sort of have this unnatural ability to sort of like, kind of like separate it out. So it's like, okay, when uh, mommy's soul has to mix with daddy's soul through the process of copulation, uh, you'll be able to create a new child soul, which will then be gestated and created a body inside the human body and all that, and then you'll pump out a kid. Again, everything regarding life as we know it, eating, uh, eating, drinking, sleeping, uh, sex, all of that has to somehow tie back to the soul. Everything has to have the soul as the ultimate explanation for it. Everything has to kind of work that way. And as we can see, the thieves are going to ambush us. As you can see, they're somewhat dirty. They fight with throwing knives. Oh. Oh. Backstabs and daggers. They have thieve daggers and all that. So you get the idea that... Uh, whoa. We get the idea that the undead burg uh, keeps all of its lower class people down here and they're forced to resort to thievery because they can not get by in any other way. Again, agile acrobatic. Oh, dang it. Couldn't do it. Okay. Gonna have to fight through the dogs and stuff again. Mitosis souls. Women are always special and bare feet in Miyazaki games. Uh, sometimes it's a spider. <laughs> the unborn child is sometimes a spider. You never know, right? I probably could have ignored these guys. Uh, let's get the other guy to come in here so that way we don't have to worry about them as a group. Women are always special in bare feet, though. Yeah, that's so true. Miyazaki. I, I think he's self-conscious about it now, right? Wasn't there a thing in Elden Ring where he was going to do some stuff with barefoot, but then uh, he realized that would, the people were telling him, hey, they're going to think you have even a bigger foot fetish or something? Or was that fake news? I remember hearing that at some point, which I would find hilarious if true. Can't wait to go barefoot in armored core somehow. <laughs> Me, he's like he was. Aren't you technically always barefoot in armored core? Like I don't think those mechs wear any clothes. Just saying. Dark Souls, the game where the shield is the most useful. Alright, let's try to... Oh. oh no, I got backstabbed. That was quick. Okay. I thought I blocked that, but whatever. There we go. <laughs> I 
Miyazaki moved on is on his hand fetish arc now. <laughs> Wasn't that a uh, Fextra Life trivia bit? I think you even commented on it, on it on Twitter. I don't recall. I remember that being a thing, but I don't remember uh, in what way I inter might have interacted with it. Uh, Fextra Life sounds like the most like a fetish dating website. I'm honestly astonished. It's about games. Uh, generally, I've not been impressed with the 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 Souls wikis, to be honest, Fextra Life or otherwise. Uh, they just don't seem to be that good, in my estimation. The only good, uh, wiki in my, uh, my book has been, uh, Bloodborne's wiki by Mep, the... Uh... Oh, I forget. I forget what it's, uh... I forget the exact URL right now. But, uh, that one, that one is just absolutely to die for. It's... It's... It does everything you want. It's comprehensive, it's simple, it's straightforward, it's not... has any of those fancy, weird modern website things to make it more complicated and hard to load pages or something like it's just like hey here's a bunch of stuff the only thing it needs is a working uh gallery section and from what i understand meth is working on that so can't wait as we can see crowded hallways beneath here all the buildings are just stuck together though being dark souls we don't really get a sense of what the homes are like just have this very bland boring box thing because these are just used for the ambushes and gameplay Now we should have more ambushes. Oh. Okay. I'll be honest, the that side uh that side back step really screwed me over. And that was just me screwing myself over. Now I'm gonna screw myself over again by not having uh my eye on the prize. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Let's go this way. Oh. Nice. Now we go through here. Anything on this corpse? So the lost undead, nice. Uh, have we cleared out this? Now we get again thief stuff, like me. So we get the, again reinforcing the idea of hey, this is where the 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 naughty crowd hangs out. These are not good people. Though there is sort of a sympathetic underpinning to this of that. Uh, what choice do they have? In these trying times where they're sort of all cramped together not give in this kind of little ghetto not given much opportunity to uh to uh, get, uh, escape poverty there we go as we can see much like how we saw a boarded up way to the, uh, in both the Undead Parish and the Lower Undead Burg all the way back there. There were boarded up, uh, pathways. We could see another graded pathway this way. So you get the idea that there is more to the city that we don't get to see because of, uh, how things are laid out. Now, let's save our, uh, let's save, uh, Griggs. We cleared out everything so that way I can, uh, uh, go to the shortcut and get my boss, uh, get my boss, uh, my boss fight ready. 
I love when they put up their buckler. You can just jump attack right on them. That, I'll have to remember that in the future. Yeah. I I gotta get into the habit of doing uh, the kick attack. I forget how useful it is in this game. Uh, this way. Now again, we use the residence key. So a generic key that anyone could have locked up. So it looks like our friend Griggs here was locked up. Sucks to be him. Brilliant. You opened the door for me. Thank you. I'm saved. I thought I might never escape. Who locked I you up in here, buddy? I am Grindheim, the sorcerer of the school. I am much obliged for your assistance. Thanks to you, I may now resume my travels. Oh. Now again, he's using the haircut to show that he's a, he's a younger guy. Again, he very much sounds like he's a somewhat of a timid sort, almost. Oh, hello. I'm fine. I will rest a while and return to Fire Rock Shrine. Uh huh. I have my sorcery, and I will be more cautious next time. Mm -hmm. Besides, I have an important task at hand. So again, he's talking about a task or a mission. So he's like, "Oh, I've got a mission too." So I was like, "Wow, everybody's got a mission in this game, huh?" As we can see here, uh, Griggs is uh. Greg somehow got himself locked up. Well, that's curious, because he got locked up with a key that a lot of residents and stuff would have. So, someone decided to throw him in here. Well, Griggs, how did you get thrown in here? Did someone, like, grab you and toss you in and then threw away the key after locking it? Or, uh, oh, what's that? A body. What's this hiding in the back corner here behind all these barrels, huh? Oh. And it happens to be a sorcerer set with a staff. Interesting. Hmm. I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure it's fine. This isn't suspicious whatsoever. Oh, hello. I'm yep. Good. Yep. He has to be more cautious this time, huh? How are you not cautious enough to avoid getting locked in here, huh? And happen to be locked in with a corpse of another academy student. But his uniform is green and yours is black. Hmm. I'm sure it's nothing. Hey, John Kick. How many hours do you have in Dark Souls 1? Uh, less than the other game, surprisingly, but it's about like 200 probably at this point, maybe closer to 300. Griggs is a massive crush on Logan, you can tell. Now, as we talked about last stream, there's this idea where uh, the the Crestfallen Warrior says a sorcerer's apprentice, but he doesn't actually say that in the Japanese script. Um, he just ta keeps on going on and on about Master Logan, apparently. He's apparently chasing after Master Logan. Which, again, we will talk about more as we continue with Griggs' stuff. But we've currently saved him, so... Hey, y'all. Yeah, good to see ya. Now we go in through here. Find a bow person. Uh, do we have any other uh, souls that I want to... Yeah, for later. There we go. Now, as we can see... There's another beggar lady over here. So again, just happens to be just outside a tower connecting to the lower undead burg. So again, we get the idea that she likely also came from there, but she decides she would hide here in the aqueduct sewers. Now, as we can see, she takes the moss that grows in these uh, this wet, damp, low-light area help that helps with uh, bleeding and poison. She also has some poison-throwing knives. Again, very fitting for the uh, for a place like the uh, the uh, the Lower Undead Burg, where people who uh, might want to get a little play a little dirty in their fights would do something like that. And of course, dung pies, because well, it's a sewer. Shit. 
Alluring skulls, again, lots of skulls with tons of souls. She doesn't seem like she's the scrupulous sort. Uh, charcoal pine resin, pretty basic item. Rotten pine resin, again, poison, connects with the poison knives. Transient curse, uh, n not shocking, given the closeness to New Londo and stuff. You can imagine some cursed individuals might be going around in the undead, uh, the lower undead burg, given everything else. But most importantly, of course, is the fact that she sells purging stones, which, if you don't, uh, if you didn't know, these were added in a later update after the game's release because of all the complaints about getting cursed in the depths and having to go all the way to New Londo to get to Ingward. Apparently, that was too much for people, so instead, uh, from software relented and decided to allow this lady to sell purging stones at a very high cost. Prism stones, fairly generic, and homeward bones, again, not the scrupulous sort. So again, we get the idea that she doesn't even realize her own hollowed state because she's gone so out of it. Dark Souls 2 would expand on this concept of essentially the, the undead slash hollows not realizing their own curse. Well, sorry, I don't don't want to buy your stuff right now. Start purging stones at uh, twice the price of Oswald. Yeah, so that was their way to kind of balance it. It's like, hey, you want it easier than beating gargoyles and getting up to Oswald? Then, uh, cough up more souls. Old Witch's Ring is the best starting item, or maybe Talisman. Yeah, I like Old Witch's Ring, personally. Uh, buy ten tongue buys and kill Capradine with Toxic from Beyond the Fog Gates. <laughs> okay, Ellie, as much as I would love to do the cheese now, we're gonna, we're gonna try this legitimately. I can't believe that hit. If I'm being quite honest, that was the last thing I expected. Griggs, you got ahead of me! Again! Went all the way around to the parish, I guess. Oh, hello. I regret meeting you under such compromising circumstances. At least we both made it back unscathed. Yeah, very convenient. Incidentally, would you care to learn any sorceries? You're clearly talented, and besides, I know you. Of course, we will require some material, but I'm happy to teach you some elementary spells. Are you interested? Sure! Splendid. Very well. I am pleased to have a chance to give something back. Well then, let's get started straight away. So I can learn sorcery if I want. Now again, as we can see here, he knows some basic sorceries. Including uh, one that helps mark someone who's become a proper uh, who's become a proper sorcerer at the academy, and yet what we see he has here is full control relayed to surreptitious sorcerers or essentially spies, spies of the the under the seedy underbelly of Vinheim's uh, society. The blacksmith Dark Souls 2 comes to mind. He's clearly recognized his daughter, but his daughter doesn't recognize it. Yeah, th th that's a good example. And keep in mind, it's because his daughter's like, oh, that ugly hollow, right? Because she doesn't realize that her dad is a rotted corpse. And, ver and he, uh, for one, doesn't realize himself that he is a rotted corpse. Um, uh, you, you really start out with the witch ring. I go for the master key. I mean, technically, as a thief, I have the master key. But I, 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 I don't care for, like... Oh, I can get through this without needing the key for stuff. I like having to be gated by uh, locks until I can get keys and things. I enjoy that much more. I'd much rather have a chance to talk to my waifu, the fair lady. Anyway, as we can see here, uh, this is a spell owned by the uh, Vinheim spooks. So spies of Vinheim like to use this, and apparently um, they come at a high price. And then more uh, basic uh, stuff that we would see if you use a sword and you're studying sorcery. 
you know, you might want to learn these spells because this will be really useful to helping uh, have an edge against other cultures and societies who might be more uh, more talented in swordplay. Again, Oral Decoy is another interesting spell because it gives you the idea that um, you can use this um, as a prank, to be a prank, right? However, it's also very useful if you were a spy because then you could be able to distract people so they would turn their back so you can slip in or uh, stab them in the back as something Dark Souls 3 makes rather abundantly clear. But again, the idea is that, you know, it's not something that a ordinary sorcerer would do. You know, that's just for people who have, like, you know, uh, unserious applications. They're not, they're just there to play around and not seriously study sorcery. Goodbye, then. Do stay safe. Which a spy might find that reputation for owning such a spell very useful. No. How did that lucky sorcerer make it back? I saved him. Unexpected. But I suppose stranger things have happened. Cool. Hmm? What now? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, again, more HP. Let's make sure that I, I can take a few hits. Uh... Perfect. I didn't even need to use one of those souls, unfortunately. Alright. So hopefully I can be able to survive in case those dogs hit me once or twice with Capra. And now let's talk to our good friend Lautrec. Ah, hello there. I have your reward. I miss Yearn. <laughs> Please, accept it. Uh, are you gonna let yourself get cursed for the new Londo mini quest? Ooh, I might actually. I might actually do that. I usually pick no gift for thematic fun, but I'll get master key if you need to run around and gather items like a miracles only run. Yeah, the thing is, I don't usually play these games like for like the build variety and stuff. I like playing them usually like once or twice and then I'm done. So again, everyone has their own approach to RPGs, which I'm fine with. For me, I'm type of the person that kind of likes. Uh, if I like playing an RPG multiple times, I'll usually play it the same way because I just really like how I played the first time just kind of weird that way anyway as we can see Lautrec here has a sunlight medal belonging to people like Solaire um which is very curious because he's not part of the sunlight covenant huh man how'd you get your hands on one of this uh you didn't do some unsavory things did you nah he was only in prison it was a mistake an honest mistake I am grateful to you for freeing me <laughs> ignore the suspicious laugh He's a good guy, I promise. Well, let's not be greedy now. Oh, come on. We're friends now. Come on. I'm your buddy. Come on. We can be chums. By the Lord's. Thanks. Yeah, I look a little hollow. Your humanity is really slipping. Yeah. But there are methods. Most fiends have more humanity than they know what to do with. Yeah, that's why we now, get summoned in order to get stuff, right? So again, he sort of is planting the idea of us uh, using, taking humanity by force if we want. Because obviously we're someone who's more worthy of it. What is it? Our futures are murky. Let's not be too friendly now. So he does have a bit of a knight's honor in trying to pay us back, but it's in a very possibly seedy method. He obviously doesn't have, the, his methods clearly involve using violence for whatever he wants. And finally, he obviously is like, hey, I don't know how things are going to play out in the future between you and me. So let's, uh, let's not get too, uh, let's not get too close here. Because you never know when things might go south. So, uh, clearly, truly, the chummiest of folk. Still by yourself, Petrus? Yep. Oh, Miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we heard about that. I miss Yearn. <laughs> well, this ain't Dark Souls 2, so we shall we shall persevere. Uh, I think we've done everything we can here, besides resting. Okay, let's try to deal with Capra then.
Now, I probably am going to buy some of those uh, dung pies from uh, the lady just to poison the capper demon, like you said, Ellie, from inside the arena. See if I can get that going so that way I don't have to... I don't have to get too uh, physical. What? <laughs> what was that? Okay. How many of how many can I buy with these souls? Nothing else in here. We just go for the buy. God, this hallway is long. It is an aqueduct. I'm more interested in your shit. <laughs> so show me your shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Only two hundred. What a steal. Yes, this gives him toxic. Hopefully this is enough. You need 10, though, didn't you say? So maybe we'll save that for a future fight. I'll just keep farming up so that way I don't lose too many souls. Good luck with that. Let me buy one more. Wait. Oh, you see, the flow of time is convoluted, so this wall doesn't exist. <laughs> Everything's going in and out. Purchase item. Dung pie. Yeah, yeah, I think, I'm sure you like me. This woman is selling me shit. And I'm buying it. What does that say about me? No need to worry about that. Uh, one sec, guys. I got a call. Sorry about that, chat. Had to go BRB for a little bit for a phone call. Very important. Had to get it done. Now let us move on. Where were we? Ah, yes. Oh. That recovery. Oh, my. You're making me use my... Oh my. Yeah, it's fine. There we go. I can live with that. Oh my. All right, guys, how, thick do you, how fast do you think I'll last? I think I'm going to die in, like, uh, 10 seconds. I'll give, I'll give me that long. I last more than 10 seconds there. That's a miracle. Come on. There we go. Woo! See if we can uh, do it in five. Fun. There we go.
Nope, doesn't look like ten's enough. I mean, five's enough. Or at least I missed enough of them that uh, didn't work. Okay. Ooh, that delay. I was not ready for that. Okay. Oh, of course. That was a waste. Dang, I couldn't see that second hit because of that tree. Come on, get me out of there. Oh. Dang it, I messed up. I committed to a dodge roll too late there. Ouch. That was close, though. That wasn't bad for a first attempt. I could have totally done that. I got a little skittish at the end there. Which was my bad. I'll be honest. If I had that toxic damage uh, stacked up there, I could have totally done it. Oh. God, I hate... Hate taking damage from mobs. Again, hopefully a remake will give us stakes of win so we don't have to deal with this in the future. Oh. This gives us three, right? So we kill the rat and we kill the hollow. Hey, Spence. Uh, yeah, Spenson. Sorry if you've already answered, but why is Capra blocking access to the depths? What's he doing up there? It's hard to take on Capra without Wolf Ring or Light Roll. Uh, do I not have Light Roll? It's possible I don't. I. Well, that's that'd be nice, but I don't care for that right now. Also, I don't need to wear this. I'm not blocking anything, so I don't need that. Yeah, it seems like that's a uh, light roll. Let's try this. Yeah, I, I'm finding myself I have slightly fewer frames to really get a hit in, so maybe I can get two hits in now. One second. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill these guys, then come back, make the buy, and then go in so we don't lose any more unnecessary souls. Gun. Oh my god. Oh well. I deserve that. That was me getting greedy. Oh, of course. Come on. Oh my, that stab. Building's faster than even that. That I don't care. Dang, there's really no beating that, huh? I just gotta kind of space out of it. For these dogs. Come on. Oh my gosh. Hurry up. Hurry up, Fido. Oh. Dang it. There we go. Alright, so that's that's four of uh that's four dung pies we can get from her. Anyway, so to answer the question that you were giving me, uh, why is Capra blocking access to the depths? What's he doing up there? Um, or I guess you should say, what's he doing up here relative to Islith, right? So Tor we know that the Capra demon showed up, and recently also there was the uh, the 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 Taurus demon as well. So the idea seems to be that in recent times that the Berg is around, the demons have come up and they're blocking access um, to the Bells of Awakening. Taurus demon blocks our way to the bridge, which allows us to get up to the to the church there. Uh, Capra blocks our way to the depths, which again takes us all the way to Blight Town and ultimately Quelag's domain, where they're doing so. So very curiously, both are in positions in order to keep us from going to um, the bells. In fact, at, there was a time when the centipede demon was going to be the boss for the uh, the the undead parish and not the gargoyle. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me that moss. Perfect. So, the indication would seem to be that the demons are purposely trying to stop us from trying to ring the bells. We will be talking more about why as we go forward and head into Isolith, so. For now, though, let's just say that their motivation is definitely to make sure that you cannot, uh, you cannot proceed. They are purposely trying to impede our progress. We can see that by how the Capra Demon has the key to the depths. He's not, even though he's not physically blocking it. Again, he's the mob boss for Lower Undeadburg over here, but he's, uh, he is trying to uh, essentially keep us out. I looked it up. Five, uh, five pieces should be enough. Okay, then we'll have more than enough with room to spare for the next time we go, and then we'll give him toxic, and then we'll like, uh, we'll, we'll leave. Oh, okay, so it's part of a concerted effort. Yes, they're they're coordinating again. As I point out, the fact that the thieves and the dogs, the stray dogs of Lower Berg, are the Capra Demon subordinates is proof that he's not just a monster that's just like, Rah, I destroy things, blah blah blah. Right? It's a creature with intelligence and can reason and have peaceful relations with other entities that are willing to serve it, at least. Right? Um, which could also mean that it could be serving others' interests and acting on their behalf. Same thing with uh, Taurus and the other demons we've seen. But this one's perhaps the, the, the biggest example. Any other important questions I should take before I go into this fight? Uh, no, I'm still mid-rolling. Uh, uh, it's really restrictive in this game, like uh, under 25. I'll be honest, I can't tell. There we go. Early centipede demon would have ruined the pyromancer class since it's immune to fire damage. That is very true. Me trying to fight Quelag with pyromancy on my first playthrough. <laughs> All right, I think we're set, guys. We'll just see how this goes. Oh. 
Oh boy. Ah, darn. Also, where did the 700 come from? What? <laughs> oh no, that's for what I picked up. Okay. They created a wall. The dogs just decided, hey, if we turn horizontally, he can't get past us. Ah, I gotta, I gotta, I just gotta kill them there if I ever see that situation again. I thought I could run past them and get to the thing, but nope, I gotta kill them. Oh, well, with this, I should have enough dung pies to uh, toxify our dude, so that'll work. That was the 10 second fight, by the way. That was my original assumption how that fight would go. Nice, Titanite Shard, that's good. Thank you. All right. Me trying to fight. <laughs> no, because so, I'll... Uh... Yeah, okay, so five should be enough, and we can put on four. We got four, so perfect. All right, let's kill this bugger over here. Okay, guys, it's official. Dark Souls 2's fall damage is just stupid. I thought that was like Elden Ring fall damage right there. Like, oh my. I didn't even realize you could fall that far without dying anywhere. Oh, you're not automatically facing me. That's cool. All right, come on. Whoa. I swear, you have to, like, predict these guys before they, like, even are, like, within your field of vision. It's like, oh, he's going to come in, like, two and a half seconds, so, oh, hit. The pair of the curse has knees made out of glass and paper. Yeah, Dark Souls 2's damage is ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. It's like, how do you expect me to do anything, game? Alright. So this gives us some wiggle room. So we kill the dogs. We make sure he gets toxic. And then we mostly just run around kiting him until either the toxic runs out. Or we try to get a few hits in every now and then when we have the opportunity, like when he jumps down or something. And then we continue to run so we can speed up the process, but yeah. Alright, we made it in. We got our souls. Got the other dog. Come on, buddy. Oh.
Dang it. And didn't even get him on Toxic, huh? I gotta be more aggressive with that if I want to do that strategy. You were light rolling without the gloves? Okay, so I was light rolling then. Okay, I'm not crazy. Okay, we can do light rolling then that way. The dogs are the real boss here. Yeah, once you get rid of them, the Capra's not so bad. It's just I'm trying to do different tactics as a thief to make this work. As you can see, these tactics are not being very effective. Yes, it's a rough fight. <laughs> Capra be like, did he really throw shit at me? Did he really throw shit at me? Yes, Mr. Capra. I'm sorry. You have a goat for a head. It's not pretty. I hate it. Now die. Ah, oh, there's no point in ever trying to hit through that. Oh, okay. Oh my, I hate that attack so much. It, it doesn't matter how early you go, it will hit you still. I don't care about that. Alright, let's get... Let's get a few more dung pies. Oh. Okay, gang. Okay, so we uh go back down. Yes, Loki's look, look, doing the disrespect strategy. I can't. I'm a thief. I have to do thiefy things. Like giving the boss toxic. Toxic. Short bow. No deep lore on that, unfortunately. Uh, purchase item. Alright, so this fight, we're not going to do it because we don't even have enough to make the minimum. Okay. All right, to give ourselves more of a chance. Let's go up here and, okay, chat, let's see. Place your bets. Oh, of course. Wow. I dodge rolled like 0 0.2 seconds too early there and got hit on the tail end of that wow well i'm gonna have enough for the toxic this time that just sucks though and then i got blocked by the dog and surrounded by all sides uh again if i ever see the dog in front of me like that in the future i need to not try to run through it i need to just try to kill it and then dodge roll right after to avoid what the inevitable capra demon attack that's gonna come right there that's got to be my strategy. Whoop. You guys mean nothing to me at this point. I have I have faced your kind. We lost a thousand souls though, so rip. Half a level up. If you want, you get your souls from the boss room and then quit out of the game to spend them. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that workaround. Cool beans, but no.
Ah, uh, now we're gonna wait until we get the full stuff. Capra! Capra! Whoops. I'm coming for you! Wanted to try that at least once. There we go. And then the dogs. Oh, okay. Nice. And we get to keep 10 Estus for the fight. Nice. That was another problem I had on my first try. I ran out of Estus there. Having the extra two or three Estus, whatever it was, would have definitely helped me uh, close out that fight. But running low really made me get a little skittish. I was like, uh, not doing this as well as I would like. There we go. Alright. Now we don't care if I lose 48 souls, so... It'll all go into trying to get, uh, Capra. Killed two dogs with one stone. Yeah, that was a nice. Uh, that was a nice way that worked out. Okay, let's see. What is this? Like round five? There we go. Damn it. Of course, I hit the wall twice in a row. Ah! That was so close. Okay, this one, we're super close there. Just gotta, just gotta make sure I get the angle right. So I gotta stay on the left side of the stairs, so that way I don't hit the wall as easily, or as soon, so I can at least get the hitbox to connect. Round six against Capra. that you turn this time I don't understand your aggro range sometimes there we go there you guys heard me oh nice All right, we'll get a few more dung pies. Therefore, we'll have more than enough to possibly toxify the the demon, and then we just kite him for six minutes. Oh, whoopsie! Right, I always make that mistake. All right, let's go this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much obliged. Hey, 
dogs. Just gonna let him slowly die to shit. Yeah, there, there was like, uh, there was COVID in that shit. Sorry, man, you're, you're kind of done. Sorry, man. Gave you the plague. Bubonic and all that. You might want to get that treated, man. I don't think I'm your, uh... And he's down! Woo! There goes Capra! Yeah. Also, might as well pick this up while we're at it. That was nice. That was a that was that was pretty clean. Only used two Estes in total, and one of them was uh, not even in the fight. Nice. So again, we can see how. Over here is where the Capra has locked it up. If we didn't have the master key, we wouldn't be able to get into here without using it, or at least not easily get into here. So again, we can see how the Capra demon is impeding our progress to Blight Town and thus to the bell down there through the depths. Uh, as we can read here. So the idea is that um, you're uh, those that are those that aren't accepted into the town, instead of being, like, say, formally killed, because, again, hollows and all that, um, it's more easier to say, okay, we're just going to banish you into the sewers, the lowest stratum that exists, and that's below, of course, the lower burg. So it's, like, below the poor part of town, there is the um, sewer area. It's, like, these are where, like, the worst of the worst, right? Like, so these are the people who aren't just, like, you know, they, they steal, they maybe steal or beg in order to get by because they're so poor. These are people who are, they're just nasty individuals through and through. And that, you know what, we, we can't accept these criminals. You know, like, Lautrec. <laughs> and so, as a result, they go to this place where, hey, there's no real sun, there's not a lot of sun, um, it's really damp because, again, sewer. Um, and the idea is that, of course, it's full of water and all that. And it's a giant maze. So we get kind of the idea of um, not really good people live down here. Now, first, <laughs> this fight went against the Geneva Convention. <laughs> oh, Sneed, that was perfect. <laughs> You're not... It's it's written in the Geneva Convention. No using any uh no using any uh sh shit slinging in order to use a biological warfare against your opponent. Well, I broke the Geneva, so darn. Lock me up. They smell, they throw their poop on people. They have a big morning star maze. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, I belong in the depths, everybody. I get it. I belong down there. That should be my home. Oh, right, I forgot. You respawn. Well, I'll definitely be able to level up from this. Oh, whoopsie. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Just, uh, bonk the head. Bonk the head. Poop the head. There we go. Man, it's so weird being a right-handed uh, Morningstar wielder when you're left-handed in real life. Real weird. Like, I'm hitting all these walls I wouldn't hit if this was the real me. My RPG experience is ruined. I can't be immersed into this world. Come on, buddy. Alrighty. Okay. Do we want to keep going into HP at this point? A little bit more won't hurt. Yeah, because we're almost at 700, so. I think that'll be good for now. Did you see her? That virtue that the women oh. inflicted with unseen touch? Oh. They're probably going straight to pillage graves. I've heard enough about the lady for a lifetime. Oh. How did that raggedy old charm end up? You know, the one who idolized some godmother of pyromancy. He left for Blighttown, but never came back. Whereas most flee from sickness, he died writing. Well, nothing will harm him once he goes home. So... Uh, this is obviously a reference to Laurentius, the pyromancer. Now, this idea of a godmother of pyromancy that is being mentioned here is not quite true. What the Japanese use is a term that, yes, it does connect to terms related to stuff like grandfather, grandmother, and stuff like that, right? Like, so ancestors and things of that nature. But it's a term that primarily means, again, your founder, your progenitor, etc. So... This is the idea that, okay, the, found, uh, the or A, because again, Japanese um, doesn't really have indefinite articles like English does, so you kind of have to infer the A slash the distinction in the text, or rather in the language when you're listening or reading it. But the point is, is that basically he's saying, oh, there's a founder of, God, there's a founder of pyromancy uh, who he goes on about constantly, and this will be relevant as we proceed further down into Blight Town. But until then, let us go see what's going on here. Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. So again, he's supposed to be their overseer. And now that his companions have finally arrived, he can now take them down into the catacombs, as the, was uh, originally planned. I love, love the roleplay in this run. Guilty ridden thief goes on a repentance quest, immediately picks up the nastiest weapon he can fire, and starts throwing shit at find and starts throwing shit at people. Listen, it, you know, it's hard breaking bad habits, okay? Like, they're old. They've been around for a while. They're ingrained into the psyche. I'm I'm a changed man, I swear. A man of God. Or the gods. I'm sorry, sorry. It would have been fun to choose whether your character is left or right-handed and then watch people argue over whether one is better. More like God and Mother of Pyromancy. See? Ellie's got it. <laughs> uh, if the Crestfallen Warrior is basically given up, why hasn't he gone hollow? Uh, FPS Ninja. He will go hollow. It is an inevitability for him. It takes time, though. It's easier when you die because that's when your soul, in the truest sense, has given up. They've let go. It's no longer operating the body. It's letting... Uh, it's sort of letting uh, fate take its course, right? That's what happens when we see, for example, souls off of corpses of hollows that we've already killed or whatever. They still have souls, um, and they could technically be, uh, they could technically revive maybe at some point, thanks to the undead curse. But uh, th those souls have given up, so they're no longer operating the body, even though they're still there. It's not like, oh, you, you exhaust your souls and then you finally die. It's when the soul starts 
it's 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 basically think about it when when the pilot stops uh when the uh, pilot stops putting his uh his hands on the wheel right it's like okay i'm not do i'm not uh i'm not going to be driving this thing anymore uh as for the crestfallen warrior in this case the idea is basically being like he's ta he's just sort of being like oh it doesn't matter whatever and he's just sort of taking solace uh in watching other people suffer because like oh they still think they can carry on or whatever but it's an inevitability he will hollow that's the point of him waiting he references several times the idea of hey we should just sit around and wait for hollowing to take us right and it's going to accelerate for him long term now obviously we never get to see that um in person because he eventually leaves down for new londo and you can interpret whether he uh he tries doing something on his own or if he gets himself and gets himself killed or if he just finally go succumbs to all despair in the dark dreary space that is new londo for some reason, I was under the impression Halloween was instant, i.e. corpse we awaking as a zombie. Um, it can be that way. For example, in Dark Souls 2, um, obviously, or Dark Souls 1 is a good example of this too. When we die, we have the full hollow form, right? So we're like dead and then we wake up, right? But if you are hollowing slowly, take, say, Lucatiel of Mara in Dark Souls 2. She wears a mask in part to hide the fact that she's hollowing in one eye. Like, it's only that far, but the hollowing process is taking hold. And it happens over period. So, again, it's not like one of these things where instantly, all at once, you become a zombie. It's something that can be this slow, gradual process. Like I said, the, the dark sign is slowly eating away at you by nature. And as you succumb to despair, that accelerates. Because no longer is your soul resisting being eaten away at by your curse. Crestfallen, hollowing is uh, inevitable, ver <laughs> inevitable virgin versus Andre millennia spanning lifespan of Ted Stora. <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Andre is uh, Andre. Andre's built different. I mean, just look at just look at the man. He he uh, he didn't skip uh, he didn't skip Arm Day. That's for sure. Andre probably has ninety nine in every stat. <laughs> he could link the fire all on his own. He just doesn't. Because he's that dutiful to his craft. Alright, so what's going on here? So, if I recall correctly, this guy's actually voiced by the ADR director. As you can see, he cast himself in the one role that uh, wouldn't be worth paying someone else to do it. Uh, as we can see, this is uh, Nico. Again, another Greek, uh, uh, Greco-Roman type of name. We get the idea that he has a uh, the Kadukia shield, which is a very... Uh, standard basic type of shield that these guys could use but um will be notable for later but we also see that he has this special axe now this is the uh the crescent axe it's called in english it more accurately means a crescent moon axe in the japanese and this is because um specifically it's a the term in japanese literally means like a three-day moon the idea being because the third or i think it's the third or fourth day of the lunar cycle is when the moon starts having goes from a new moon to uh, starts having a uh, uh, what's it called a waxing crescent crescent so it's starting to gain light this is very relevant for the way of white or again the japanese is more literally something like the white faith because the idea would be that they are trying to bring light bring the sun or the sun's light uh to this night of the world of man so instead of it just being a new moon where everything's black and everything's pure dark there's a little bit of light that is gaining ground as the Way of White comes in here. And as we'll see, this is a very old and very notably, uh, I think it's copper or bronze, uh, uh, war axe. So, that'll all be on the test class. But this guy, he's, uh, he's like, mm, rumble, rumble. He's not, he doesn't seem like he's a friendly sword. He definitely doesn't want to interact with us. What's Vince got to say? Hmm? What have we here? You look awfully raggedy. Oh, times are grim. At least you can do is look sharp. Don't wow. dare meet my lady like that. Listen, man, you I'm a thief. Scare her off for good. I was poor my whole life. I, I grew up on the streets. This is this is all I have. You don't have to be an asshole about it. These clerics, man. Oh, you again. What business have you? I don't suppose we can help then. We accompany my lady on her righteous mission. Uh-huh. It is quite a chore, but I'm stuck with her. And Nico too. I can't very well abandon them now. Now, if you're familiar with anime tropes, you will know this trope of the idea of the rotten relationship. The idea being is that uh, two people who um, 
they they or more than two people these are people who are in a relationship where it's not necessarily the most harmonious of relationships but they're kind of inseparable they can't get rid of each other exactly right like you know childhood friends they grow up together so they kind of do they owe their parents always have them do stuff together or whatever so they're kind of in a situation where they're always kind of doing stuff for one another even if they're not necessarily on the best of terms and there's definitely an arch uh, a certain uh trope in anime where it's like the young innocent maiden surrounded by the really gruff kind of dour boy and the kind of more upbeat uh open you know cordial type of guy though cordial we're restraining that here for dark souls but stay stay with me so we kind of kind of see how this dynamic is sort of existing here we get the idea from petrus that these are let's see if he oh, mentions it miracles yeah, yeah, yeah. Rhea is the youngest there we go. daughter of the good house of Avalon. those young knights are her old schoolmates but I'm not sure what to make of them. I'm afraid they may be a bad influence. So what he says here in the Japanese, again, this is where we get into the point of Rhea's questline has been completely butchered by localization. Uh, she's, not the young, she's not the youngest daughter of the good house of Thorland. The idea is that she is a, the daughter of a prestigious family in Thorland. Thorland, or Solondo, as we talked about uh, earlier, is a, uh, a country, a place. It's not a house or a family. And the idea is that um, in Thorland, there are noble families. And these noble families, uh, she, is, uh, she is the daughter of one of these presti more prestigious noble houses. So again, we notice how Petrus comes from a noble line of knights. So he comes from a, a, you know, a posh family himself. But he is now serving on behalf of an even more notable family that exists in Thorland. Uh, he's though kind of has this thing with, uh, he's not trying to cast dispersions on Vince and Nico here. He's not being like, oh, I'm afraid they might be a bad influence. He's just saying, hey, when I look at them, they don't look like friends to me. And that's what he's actually trying to get at in the Japanese language. And the idea being is, as we can see, one of them's just kind of grumbling and the other one's kind of like, you know, we, you know, I, I can't really get, you know, it's like, it's awful. And I don't really kind of, it's such a chore to do all this, but you know, I, it, we're kind of inseparable. We can't do this. And the idea being is that, okay, they have a history together where they are, again, they're, uh, they're school they they go back to being friends back at school. And as we can see, uh, Vince and Nico don't seem to come from the same high status family as either Petrus or Rhea. It seems they come from maybe more minor nobles, if anything. But um, we could clearly tell that they are still sort of tagging along with her and doing this despite all the grumbling and complaining that they have. And Petrus is kind of like, are they really friends? Like, are these really people we can, uh, are they really kind of people who we can uh, trust to bring along here? I hate the name Sol Londo. <laughs> uh, if you brought Andre to the kiln, he would just use FF to keep blacksmithing. The moon is always an ill omen in From Games, so you can see the foreshadowing that these aren't good guys. Well, the idea of the moon here, of course, is that the idea that uh, we'll see the moon played off in different ideas, but the idea of a waxing crescent moon is to give the idea that this is a moon which is gaining light. So they are supposed to be the force of good that is adding to it. What well, you can drive above beyond that, well, we'll leave that to you. But uh, as we can see, uh, they're not using morning stars like, uh, like a certain uh, cleric here. Uh, they are not the, they're not as brutal and b cruel as uh, certain clerics of the way of white huh Petrus you have anything to add to that Nico is too mentally infirm to be malicious hello there Loki got a ton of lore on here the discord invite you posted on Twitter a while ago doesn't seem to work now uh, that's fine uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name unfortunately in Russian so also good the, the way of white armor and Dark Souls one is ugly <laughs> God the way of white armor yeah it is it's uh Hey, it's for protection. The idea of the armor is to make sure that you can, uh, they can be like tanks. They can take any hit. Because the idea with Way of White with Lloyd's Cleric Knights is that they never fall. They never fall in battle. They're tenacious. They make sure that they keep uh, pushing through, uh, which kind of works without poise works in this game. So, yeah, neat. Anyway, um, if you want to join the Discord, check the community uh, tab on the YouTube channel here. Again, please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and all that. Uh, in order to see more of this content as soon as possible. Anyway, but check the community tab and you'll find the uh, you'll find another link to the Discord and that one is functional now. The old one was only for a week. This one should hopefully last forever. I, I thought I had to buy or join for something like that, but it looks like I could just set it manually. So 
I should have a working link permanently. And I, you know what? I'll probably even tweet out a new link after this stream, since you asked, in order to make sure that people are aware of that. So thank you for uh, putting that to my attention. I forget that people can find my old tweets. Weird, huh? Uh, I hate the team Solanda, like you said, Ellie. Yeah, it's not the, it's not the best. But again, I'm so glad you guys are just having so much fun with the lore. Again, if you guys want to get the full scoop on Dark Souls and can't wait for these live streams or anything, or just want to support me for what you learned in these live streams, please consider buying Abyssal Archive. Check the link in the description, go to the website, and you can buy uh, both a physical for pre-order, and then you'll have it shipped out for later next year, or the digital edition, which is available right away. Plenty of different versions in that digital bundle that will let you be able to have your options on how you want to read it Um read it on your uh device of choice anyway ivan uh gabrilov oh cool or ivan i guess i should say ivan gabrilov very nice thanks so much ellie oh yeah medical. anything else you want to say Catra petrus yeah so yeah this this piss, this annoys me so much but i'm not i'm a yeah, yeah so Come again? yeah so she's not the youngest daughter she's just a daughter and it's not of the good house of Thorland. It's of a, a, a prestigious family. These Again, the term for, again, uh, what I say is prestigious family is often used in context of noble families. And obviously, she's clearly noble. Um, again, comparing to Petrus and other people who are clearly noble. So, again, that's uh, just uh, point, leaving that out there. Uh, what else do you got to say, Vince? Hell? Oh, it's you. Need to leave momentarily. Oh. The catacombs aren't exactly my idea of a good time, but... What can one do? I do hope we meet again. Oh, thanks. Very or not. Okay, so very or not. You may be wondering, why don't we hear very or not in later Dark Souls games? That's because it's entirely made up. <laughs> Source made it the fuck up. Uh, very or not is the localization's attempt to make uh, the phrase, uh, may the flames guide thee. Uh, sound more fancy. So that phrase you hear in the Dark Souls DLC, that phrase you hear in Dark Souls 3, that is the same thing as Very or Nox. Now, it's broken Latin that seems to mean something like Fear the Night, but obviously it just means, hey, may you have the guidance of fire. That's what the Japanese is trying to tell you, and that's what these guys say. But, uh, again, I can see why the localization decided they weren't going to carry that over into 3. Just a hunch. I think they realized it was stupid. Oh, it's you. Need to leave. Yeah, yeah. So as he told us, uh, Rhea would apparently be scared to death if she saw someone who was so dirty, so un, you know, so you know, livid in the world, right? Like someone who's gone out there and fought like we have. Because no matter what uh, background we choose, we're not a noble. So we're not someone who's basically had a silver spoon in our mouth and is all clean and prim and proper to meet a noble lady like her. Oh, well, we'll talk to her anyway. You are undead as well. Yes. You need no time to set in her. I have my mission, and you, no doubt, have yours. We must not let this curse overcome us. So we can see how Rhea is incredibly devout. She's like, listen, we both have our missions. I have mine for the church. You have your own in general for undead. As undead, we both have to accomplish ours, or else the... Um, the when she says, like, the curse overcome us, the idea being is that uh, we can't let the curse essentially... Uh, we can't let the fact that we are cursed or get in the way of that, right? Like, otherwise, we're just cursed beings, right? Um, they're, they're, if, if we're not doing our mission, if we're not serving our uh, God-given purpose, then uh, we're just monsters that deserve to be killed, right? And we have, the, again, the idea that the cleric knights, these types of people in their ugly, ass-heavy armor, are uh, their j entire shtick is to hunt undead. But ironically... They're all undead themselves, so clearly an undead hunt went wrong, eh? Now, again, there's also a point being made by Lautrec down here, I believe, if we recall. But I don't know if he'll mention it now. Let's, let's double check. The link in the community indeed works, thanks. That's great to know, Ivan. I'm so glad to hear that. Well, Hope Ellie's not uh, gaslighting me on how to say your name. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Have you heard of trusty patches? Oh, patches, huh? Ever a man has rubbed me up the wrong way. Ugh. If he ever comes around again, I swear I'll have his eyes. So you have the idea that Lautrec has uh, relations with the seedy folk in town, people who shouldn't necessarily be trusted, much like him. <laughs> uh... 
But yeah, he's clearly had a few, he's had run-ins with Patches. Patches has on more than one occasion caused him trouble. Who would have thunk? And he now, next time he sees him, he wants to wring his neck. Thorlin said, cow in fear of the night. Market must live there. <laughs> Cow and fear of the night, Todd. I mean, undead. Yeah, yeah, undead. Perfect. Yeah. Saved it. All right. So we'll go on a. Let's see. Yo, okay there, girl. We talk to you. We talk to them. So we get the idea that they've all come. So schoolyard chums come with their schoolyard chum to escort her. They're going to be led down by Petrus, who is the, basically the uh, their senior for this. He's the guy who uh, clearly has been assigned to make sure that this mission is a success, because he comes from an elite family that can make sure that this even more elite family uh, will come to no harm. As we can see, all these people are doing their mission. They seem to be acting under the implicit understanding that they will be able to return to the world of man eventually if they fulfill their mission. You will see this as how characters behave going forward, but... Again, keep that in mind that there seems to be the idea that those in the church believe that as undead clerics, they will have the right to come back to the world of man if they perform this sort of penance as this mission for as unholy undead um, by traveling down to find the right of kindling. Now, uh, we actually have confirmation from Miyazaki, uh, Miyazaki of this idea in interviews before release. He does talk about the idea that there are people who, um, who do, there are uh, factions that are essentially tr that most undead of course all go to lordra and stay there but there are factions which do plan to return and make their way back this seems to be what he's referring to it's never stated outright but the implication from everyone's behavior will make that entirely obvious as we keep going all right so uh anything else that we're uh, forgetting no we still have the undead uh parish up there we still have darkroot garden uh let's try the instead of doing the depths today let's uh let's save the depths for next time and today we'll try doing a little in, of Dark Root Garden. We'll see how we can handle some of the stuff here. I also want to have take my hand at the the Black Knights maybe next stream or maybe end of this stream. So, oh, let's do this first. Praise the sun, sir. Go, got to dip. Awaiting arrival of Abyssal Archive with much anticipation. Hey, Yaku. Thanks so much. Very cool. Again, you guys can always watch the VOD for this stuff. It's really cool to have you guys in here listening in. It's really wonderful. I'm so glad to have your support. The FPS Ninja Demon Souls <laughs> MGS isn't related to evil. Uh, what were you talking about? Um, Moon always seems to be related to evil. Demon Souls Moonlight Greatsword is connected to the old one. Bloodborne MG Warped. To the yeah, um, Moonlight Greatsword isn't connected to the old one per se. Um, yeah, there's a. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that's like, entirely accurate. Is there any merit to the idea that uh, Petrus is not a cleric, but a guy who stole the armor and items from the real Petrus? Probably not. His dialogue is a little too... Because his Japanese dialect is incredibly polite, uh, essentially. And it's... Re like, he talks, like again, like all, a bunch of the others. And the others seem to uh, recognize him as that or whatever. And he's the way he behaves later in his own quest line, again, all of that sort of leads to the conclusion that, yeah, he's a genuine, he's a genuine cleric of the church. That he isn't just someone who somehow killed and nabbed the real Petrus. That's a, you can kind of say that from every character. Well, maybe this character uh, killed and stole from the real person or whatever, right? Like the only thing you want that really you can kind of make that case for is Griggs, as we'll see later on. But like even then, it seems like Griggs is in fact Griggs. He just uh he just may not be everything he says he is. The moon is always connected to divinity in some way, which isn't always good or evil. Yeah, that's true. There is, does often seem to be some uh, connection to the to gods of some sort. It's the it's a revelation from God, i.e. the old one. Oh, oh no, FPS ninja. Uh, 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 that's a bit of a complicated topic on its own. But I get what you're trying to say. But the 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 moonlight, the revelation from God and uh, stuff like that, or revelation item from God to be technically accurate the old one is okay the the temple who accept those items and stuff they consider it revelations from god uh 
it's not entirely accurate because these are just magic, generic magic items and stuff that they found, and they kind of just deem them to be holy, right? So it's a, a case of mistaken identity. Their god, the old one, um, quote unquote, isn't necessarily their god. It's just sort of like, um, they 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 sort of mistake the hand for the face, if that makes sense, right? Like the the they worship all this entity where they're like, okay, this is like God. He wants us to be good. He wants us to do this. And they're right. It's just kind of accidental because the the entity who they attribute f to that is to, like you said, the old one in the shape and the image. But yeah, it, that's separate from the actual God who created the world and all that. Yeah, see my uh, analysis on Demon Souls on my website, lokisouls.com. I talk a lot more about Demon Souls stuff and Demon Souls lore, and that that clarifies it better than I can off the top, off this, uh, off the cuff like this. Anyway, let's go see. Now, as we head down here into the church, again, we can see more evidence of the church in its original setup with the way the pillars and stuff are. Um, you can imagine pews being here maybe at one point out of wood, but now all that's left is the stone. Oh God, that's a that's a delay. Oh, that's that sucks. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Dang it. Should have gone for that second uh, power. That was me being greedy. My only thing I can think of is how he's unable to use the 16 Faith Talisman. Yeah, uh, Petrus can't use Advanced Miracles, because he doesn't have a lot, a lot of faith. He's just not... Again, the point is that he's a corrupt priest. Oh, look, they're gone. What is, who could have seen that coming? Also, did I not rest at the bonfire? I didn't rest at the bonfire. Okay, we're skipping the enemies and going straight to the bonfire this time. My bad. Alright, so we come here, and now we'll rest. This is also probably a good time to start, uh... Enhancing this bonfire, huh? We can use this. Reverse hollowing. Nice. Now let's uh, continue onward. We're going to want to kindle that thing up to 20 when we get to Sense Fortress, that's for sure. So we got... Ah, darn. Man, the hitbox on that is... Uh, yikes. Yeah, I think we're just going to ignore this. Now, that's our first look at a Titanite Demon, or to be more accurate, a quote-unquote Bond Demon. This term for Bond is the same word used uh, for the Nexus in Demon Souls, or uh, the Lynchpin, quote-unquote, Temple, because the in Demon Souls, the Nexus was shaped on the outside, at least, like a Lynchpin, uh, and obviously had very thematic and uh, symbolic uh, uh, connotations on top of that. But for the purposes of what we're talking about here, there's the idea that that is made from Titanite or Bondstone. The idea being, of course, is the power of bonding is used in order to help the Titanite be this rock that can especially uh, make uh, weapons even better, right? Now, we also see here the tree men. They look a little wild. We, of course, will see them again in the DLC, but for now, as we can see, we have these sort of 
plant golem like creatures. Who uh who are just kind of, you know, gone native. Now as we can also see here, magic particles in the air and a glowing white uh oh whoopsie. Whoopsie, wasted that. We can get rid of this stuff now and go back to my ever trusty binocular. Binoculars, as we can see here, a glowing white uh, flower. So this flower has the power of light in it, which is very interesting. Same thing here. And there are magic particles in the air. So we get the idea of light and magic being a super latent in this place. Uh, I just assume that any legendary magical item the church found was from their unwitting god, the old one. No, I don't blame you for, for thinking that. But yeah, it becomes clear that the... Uh, again, like I say, you can read the analysis for the full breakdown. But uh, believe me, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with the quote-unquote church. Uh, or as I refer, it's more accurately referred to as like the temple. And I refer to it as the temple of god for my analyses. But like, yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot of cool stuff going on with the temple and their items and like Astraya and stuff like that. It's worth looking at because it really gives you the idea that... um. Yeah, it's not necessarily that all the stuff is connected to the old one slash god um, directly. It's more so that the... Uh, there we go. As we can see, much like trees, they can bend like vines and things like that. Being plants. And uh, it's more so that the uh, items seem to be magic items that are left after the, uh, the, great, uh, the great banning of uh magic in demon souls universe but again this is a dark souls lore play not a demon souls lore play we'll do that in the future though honestly i'm definitely looking into getting a ps5 and playing the remake so we can really talk about uh what the remake did good what the remake did bad how that compares both the japanese scripts in uh to the english scripts of both the original demon souls and this one now as we can see there's this little tower structure here there's also a what looks to be the moonlight butterfly all the way up there. Curses. Curses. There we go. I can get a better look now. So there's the Moonlight Butterfly up there on what looks to be a fort of some sort. This fort uh, gets touched on in Abyssal Archive, though I don't talk about all the implications, which I will talk about here. Because unfortunately we cannot confirm some concept art that is used in this game. So I do not want to... Uh, Go on a tangent for the book. Either way, it's worth keeping in mind the idea that there are ruins of a fort here uh, near the church, um, but near Sans Fortress and, of course, Anne Orlando and things like that, and that'll be relevant for later. Large soul of a nameless soldier. We want that soul up there, too. Oh, it's a temple and not a church. Nice Jewish representation, Umbasa. <laughs> uh... Yes, yeah, uh, the, the, again, you could, like, translate it probably as a church if you really want to, but yeah, it, it's a term, it's not the normal word that you would translate for church, that's for sure. It uses other terms that more mean, like, temple or something to that effect. Again, the idea just being, again, all, again, it's sort of like, uh, semantics at that point, because again, um, obviously, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a religious place for an, or it's, it's a, it's a holy site for a religious place that where they come and gather and do things related to the religion, right? So, like, you can put that into multiple, uh, multiple ways. Now, this is, I think, our first instance of a illusory wall that we've encountered so far. Again, associating this place with magic. We also see that this is what the whole door was about. That we'd want to go through. It's you need some magical key in order to unlock these doors and let us continue. These ruins seem to be established in order to keep us out. Thankfully, the wall here is broken and we can go deeper into the forest over there. Let's see if uh nah, we're not gonna check with Andre yet. Let's check down here on this side room. Look at that, some nice friendly bushes with an item. Scary! Oh. They're doing the Skull Kid head shake. I'm spooked. Plants can't bleed! Oh, this is gonna hurt. 
Well. Well. I got the item. That's all that matters. <laughs> Well, uh, this is, might be a moment where my dagger is going to be more... Oh, darn it. Darn it. I got to go through that. Uh, let's see if my dagger is more effective in that regard. Uh, how many... Uh, how many... How much Titanite do I got? Only one. Darn. Well, you need it. Uh, reinforced weapon. That requires two. That requires two. Well, we, we need one more. Well, as we can see, the Titanite Demon uses lightning, which is very curious because his staff actually is, quote-unquote, 100% uses just magic damage without any lightning effect. Oh. Well, there goes my souls. I didn't expect that, uh... I didn't expect that stagger to make it impossible, to be honest. So we get the idea that Titanite is, of course, connected to lightning, which will be relevant for later. As you may recall, Titanite is supposed to be these pieces of these legendary slabs, um, a sort of an original uh, block of Titanite, which it was carved and engraved of, and these are sort of the flakes that were left over and happened to spread through the world. We will be learning more about that as we, of course, get more and better Titanite. Doesn't even matter. I just oh. there we go. All right. As I said before, let's see what Bandit Knife can do for us here. Seems like uh, Morning Star is still better. Morning Star is still the better choice. Again, Darkroot Garden is more accurately the Garden of the Black Forest. You can argue why it is recalled the Black Forest. The Garden Point, of course, will be connected to the DLC, as we will see going forward. Fun, come on here. Oh, darn it. There we go. Moss clumps, because again, plants, damp area. Low light right now. Lots of time for moss to grow. Oh. The irony of poise causing you to take more damage. Well, it is what it is, right? We will deal. Uh, we're not gonna... We have enough already so we'll worry about uh what we're missing when we uh when we get back here now of course we see a wonderful white light oh of course Look at that wonderful tree. Nothing suspicious here. Wait, is that tree moving? It's a moving tree. Well, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I mean, we're technically already met a lot of moving trees. But anyway, we shall now go this way. Oh, look at this. Not just ruins, but ruined armor. Or rather, golems.
These golems are armed with uh, armor and shields. They also use a tranquil walk of peace effect, a miracle we will acquire elsewhere, at which point I will talk about more. Also hilarious that these big heavy guys, I could just be like, Ragdoll! They're as light as a feather! <laughs> as we can see, we're not just seeing a ruins of fort, but ruins of troops for that fort. Only, these aren't really troops, these are golems. Curious. Most curious. Oh. We'll see. There we go. Now we're going down this path. We can now see another curious enemy. This guy seems to have had a run-in with uh, the wildlife. As we can see, there's this tree lizard. Looks fairly normal, except it has two snake-like necks. Heads, I should say. On long necks. Making them a bit dangerous. See? No. Man, so much easier when you have pyromancy, huh? And they poison with their... Partisan from this here. Now, these guys, they drop stuff like uh, egg vermifuges, which are basically acorns. Which, again, makes sense considering they are tree lizards. So you kind of get the idea of what the wildlife eat here, and it also gives the implication that you can get those uh, egg vermifuges from here in Darkroot Garden, which makes sense, given what else we learned about this region. You can mistake them for just another vine, if you're not looking carefully. We gotta wait for you to... Again, Tranquil Walk of Peace Effect is essentially a miracle that will let you um, slow you down, thereby enabling peace, because you won't be able to charge in and get for the attack. So you can kind of always evade uh, conflict if you're the caster. Now, the fact that such a miracle is being used by this tells us, again, once again, we have light, we have holy magic, and we have um, regular uh, blue sorcery-like magic. Very curious. Gotta come here. Yes. Again, we find more ruins. Another piece of a quote unquote fort. Where is the. Where are you? Oh no. You were not the one I wanted to deal with. I'm going to regret this decision. Alright. I get it. Y'all want me. Where's the one I can kill? Oh my god, there's more of you. Stop. I get it. I get it. I really do. Darn. Well, I tried, chat. Would calling the primordial serpents overdelp tree lizards count as a racial slur? <laughs> I don't know, Sneed. Ask them. How long have these guys been sitting in this forest? A few hundred years, give or take. He's taking a really good nap. The irony of poise causing you to take... Well, yeah, okay, we're back to the... Okay. Uh, okay, let us, uh, let's, let's, uh, up our... God, I can't use two. God, I can't use two. It hurts. Whoop. 
Reverse hollowing. Kindle. I love how the Elden Ring makes the foreground objects transparent when they cover the screen like that. Thank you, FromSoft. Yes, quality of life in the later games is definitely nice. Again, I know a lot of people talk about, like, the speed of this. I don't mind the speed so much of, the, of, of Dark Souls. Again, I don't even notice it unless I go, like, straight from, like, Dark Souls 3 to Dark Souls, like, right off the bat next to each other. But, like, oh boy... Oh boy, does some of the quality of life stuff really remind me of how old this game is. Alright, where are you? Are you done? Yeah, give up. Uh, okay. What items are there that we could... Oh. You are kidding me. Also hilarious that these guys take as many hits as these frickin' trees. There we go. One tree dead. Give me all that blood red moss clumps that I don't need anymore. I would ra rather have the poison ones when we're going to Blight Town, to be honest. Dang it. I saw, thought he was gonna jump in for a grab or something, but nope. There we go. Alrighty. We'll get rid of you. At least one of you in advance. Come on. Oh. When the hell did you get in here? There we go. Glad I managed that. That was that could have been real awkward. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Come on, tree. Come on. Oh, my. Oh. Ah, darn. Got me on the other one. We were so close, chat. I love the vibe of the Dark Root Garden. In my opinion, sadly, it never happened again in any Souls games. Yeah, I really like the... I really like that, uh, Rapooch. It's really cool to, like, go through Dark Root Garden and, uh... And just, like, kind of enjoy the atmosphere of this dark place at night. Has this almost swampy feel, but it's not a swamp. I should never have gotten that item. Biggest mistake of my life. Oh my gosh. You're just one walking pain in my butt. My touche. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Gosh. There we go. Oh, of course. Hip boxes. There we go. Purple moss clump. That's what I want. Dang it. I always keep on making the assumption it's going to jump in, but nope. Never a good assumption to make, clearly. Oh. Alright. There we go. wonder if I can uh, power attack the... Uh, the trees in time before they do their whip. Ah, worth a shot. Okay, you. Perfect. 
Well, we can worry about that later. Let's get the item first instead of keep uh, bashing our heads against walls. I can always do this, get the shortcut, then grab the thing before. Oh, this is straight to the boss. Oh. Now, we can summon uh, Beatrice here. Unfortunately, I'm not human, so I can't. But we do have the idea that Witch Beatrice is in the Dark Root Garden area, which will be important. Now, she doesn't use any dark sorceries or anything like we'll see with later game witches. But as we learn, she is a quote-unquote heretical witch. And uh, that will be relevant for the future. <laughs> you could argue a mana went for similar vibe runes with overgrow small lights in dark areas, natural lights. Of course, not a swamp. It's a fen. <laughs> Gotta be the nerdy face, huh? It's not really a swamp. It's more of a fen, you know? There we go. Now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, no. If I miss, it's gonna hurt me, though. So, I can do it, though. I can definitely do it if I have the range. Yeah. Now, here's the question. Does it work? Yes, it does. Get away from the others. Yes. Good. I don't know if I actually dodged that or if he just hit above my head. These these golems were apparently not the they're not Ulysil's best folks. Ulysil ain't sending their best, or I should say leaving their best. Uh, what heretical means in this context? Uh, heretical is a term that means, um, it means, like, different point or different ends. Um, so it's not necessarily strictly in the religious sense of heretical, though, um, obviously it can be. Again, I've talked about the idea of being a nonconformist, someone who doesn't exactly adhere to the norm. And there are many ways to read that, of course, in this context. Now, this is where we get the Elite Knight set. Now, for those wondering why we find a store and armor here... Uh, it should be noted that there were plans for Oscar, the knight we met at the beginning in the Undead Asylum, who doesn't name himself except in cut dialogue. We would have encountered him here in Dark Root Garden at one point, and this seems to be the reference that From Software, being a very meta company, um, decide to make. So there's the idea that, again, belongs to a nameless knight. This is in reference to Oscar, perhaps uh, an elite knight. Again, elite means, in this case, a high-ranking knight. So someone who, like, um, again, this is why they go with the locals which goes with elite, because the idea is that this is someone who's, like, they've, they've proven their skill. They're, they have very high status among the knights in Astora here. Although he was loath to give up on his undead mission, he perished at the undead asylum and went hollow. Uh, this is clearly written with the idea we would probably have attained it originally from um, Oscar... In the Asylum, at what, some point, the developers, I guess, decided against that, but they never changed the description to reflect. Um, again, no surprise there. We'll see something similar uh, going forward. Oh, we don't need to kill these people here. Now, for those that don't know, there is, in fact, an event where this giant moving tree will, in fact, start moving and hide here to kind of confuse us. So, like, if we went here... And we kept going. The tree will move, except when we look at it. And then we'll eventually stop at this point. So it blocks our way here while opening our path here. And this seems to have been the developer's idea to um, make us uh, confuse us, as it were. To make us be like, huh, wait, what's going on? Whatever. Now, I don't think this fools most people. Again, I feel like if Dark Souls had more uh, next-gen graphics, you can really make this tree blend in with the others. And uh, really kind of confuse people unless they're looking real closely at how it moves at the bottom. 
And I think if they sped up its speed so that way it more readily does this, this event would happen more often to people. But anyway, say la vie. It would be cool to play these alternate versions of FromSoft games. I agree. I would like to see more remakes and stuff that play around with the FromSoft formula and allow different things to occur. Uh, do we want to do that? I don't think so. I think we're good. Yeah. Well, it is what it is, my man. Again, we can see that this is an enemy that blocks our payoff. Can't really do anything, though, except move. But it does give us the idea that trees are not necessarily limited. This one is a bit watery and sort of almost deflates. But again, it gives us the idea that trees are not limited, much like the tree men we saw earlier, to being just immobile objects. Oh, what are you? A frog ray! Another creature that lives in this area. We can collect stuff like uh, uh, green... Uh, what is it called in this game? Not green grass. Uh, I, I'm, I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but you know what it is. The, the, the special grass or... Um, Oh, green herbs or something, maybe? Uh, special grass or herbs that you can use in order to have more stamina recovery. Again, these often grow on waterfronts. So, makes sense that we would find these frog rays who are clearly evolved to, uh, adapted to, uh, live at least near the surface of the water, like a lily pad, almost. Um, they can be able to, uh, get those types of plants to eat from the shallow waters. <laughs> Fuck trees. <laughs> You can jump down from above, like where that one moss guy is sitting in wait. Uh, yeah, I probably could, but I wanna, I wanted to kill the tree. Oscar, Hollow Knight as a second boss fight in the asylum. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Again. We can see a tree here. We'd have to kill this one, so we'll leave him alive. Why not? Because I don't think they respawn, if I recall correctly. Now we're going through here. We'll see that there is a lake. We can actually see this lake a little bit, I think, from the top, though it might be covered by the trees. As we can see, these frog rays live in the lake. Ooh. Oh! I had less health than I remembered. Okay, I wasn't at full. Whoopsie. That's my bad. I screwed myself over there. Hey, Loki! Hey, Scanty! Good to see ya! Glad you could join in for the stream. You missed the, the harrowing battle of Capra Demon. Gotta watch the VOD for that one. We, uh... <laughs> we, we totally didn't cheese the fight, I promise you. It was a, it was a legit fight, I swear. All above board. You can't see the lake from above since the game doesn't render from the Moonlight Butterfly Arena. All oh, right, so like the it's just the the tree it's like just a treetop texture or something, right? Yeah, okay. Now I want to keep one of these frog rays alive to show off something cool, but uh, we'll see how that works. So many people with whip attacks in this area. Now, as we can see, they're very slow moving for the most part, though they can leap. They got a nest. They got strong hind legs for swimming and jumping, as we can see. Oh. Oh. Gotta be careful.
All right, come over here, buddy. Oh. Where is it? Find a pool of water. Ah, this might be more trouble than it's worth. Might have to get the one that's already going up. Hey, buddy. You see any pools of water down here? Anything our, our our little froggy friend can enjoy? No? Well, darn. Maybe if I killed this guy first. There we go. Nope. Okay. So again, we see this uh, lake here. Now, they actually, if I recall correctly, they actually hide Undead Berg and stuff. You should be able to see some of it from over here, if I recall correctly. But again, just gives you kind of a rough idea of the type of place Darkroot Garden is in relation to the Undead Berg and the old church and the Undead Parish and all that jazz. Unfortunately, we don't have any pools of water down here to show off, so I'll probably have to show it off maybe in another stream. Oh. There we go. I love these Manta things. Very nice coloration. Yeah, very nice. Oh, the rare animation, I see. Yeah, I would like to show it off, but... Uh, if I recall correctly, you can't see the lake from... Yeah, since the game doesn't... Re yeah, okay, yeah, so we got that. They also like to play with corpses of their kin, it seems, clearly. Uh, chemicals in the water made the frogs raise. <laughs> uh... I think the best way to lure the lone lone frog is in the stone soldier area. Yeah, I, the one on the the one on the the that's already on the platform is the best one. So we'll do that in the future. Um, for now, then we'll we will go up here again. We continue through the ruins um, to give ourselves an idea, if I recall correctly. The fort is that away, and I think actually, if I recall correctly, this is. Yeah, this is the... I think these pillars are part of the bridge that leads to it. So we're literally... The fort's, like, right around here. Um, we're going through here, though, instead. And then... We have our friend here. Hello, Mr. Stone Knight. Oh. That's what happens when I don't two-hand, huh? Oh. Okay! I now understand the importance of two-handing against this guy. Woo! That was a difference. Okay, we're not losing that 8k, so... We're gonna run past a lot of stuff. Oh, look. We don't want to go that way. All right, we'll come back to the water for you later, my mentor ray friend. Yeah, this is the best option. Hey, buddy. Hello, Mr. Tree. Don't think they're following me. Good. Very good. Give me my souls. Alright. The world of difference, huh? Now we come up here, we find a corpse with the wolf ring, which of course is a foreshouting for Artorias. The idea being is his grave is in the area. Looks like somehow that, gr that ring got from his grave to around, but as we'll learn, there are people who might be interested in robbing the grave, so would not be surprising. Ooh. There we go. Yep, and we're just down there where those pillars are, right? So we can see we took a little side route all the way around. Now, we deal with our friend, the Moonlight Butterfly. Hold 
start. There we go. Gotta cut down the trees with a morning star. Uh, cut dialogues just Chester robbed the wolf ring so that the corpse might be him. Uh, no, because we can kill Chester and stuff, and the, the quest was, in fact, actually just plain cut. Uh, there was a lot of weird, like, time paradox shenanigans that could go on with the Chester questline, so I don't blame them for cutting this. Though those fake tree enemies are so weird, only appear twice and do almost nothing. Well, yeah, the problem is that they're supposed to, they're supposed to move. So, like, the one moves from just, like, left to right in the area, so it doesn't do much. But the other one is supposed to move to the area you walk in from, from here, right? So it's supposed to be at the end of the hall, over the, uh, the end of this, like, passage here. And, like, block that way, so that way the other way's open, so you kind of get lost. The problem is they move too slow, um, and you don't have enough time if you choose not to do the Moonlight Butterfly to find it, right? So it's one of those things where it's like, oh, hey, this must be the path I'm supposed to go. Wait, why am I going down? Wait, why am I finding this frog right? Ah, where am I? Right? So it's it's supposed to work like that. It doesn't work as well, though, like I said. It just, they, they need to make the event work, like, as soon as you, like, uh, as soon as you're, like, in the arena, the, the moving tree should start moving when you're not looking at it. And it should uh, move slightly faster than it already does. So that way it can make it work. As is, it's kind of like, huh, it moves, I guess. Uh, yeah, we don't need that anymore. Uh, yeah, I'm not, my dagger's doing jack, so. Go into Morningstar more. Uh, let's use the souls we have here. That's it. Uh, this is enough, though, right? Yeah, we need another thousand. So let's uh, let's quickly farm that up and uh, get our souls. Hello. There you are. I just gotta kill a few more of you. Ooh, for toxic. Nice. Relaxing Darkroot Garden. Now again, as I've talked about how these are ruins and they are connected to Ulysseal, we have the idea, obviously, with the DLC firmly connecting it. Fun fact, the DLC was actually a cut quest from the main game. You can actually have hear Miyazaki in a podcast, on in obviously a Japanese podcast, talking about the... Uh, how they uh, had to cut the quest line about saving Dusk when you go and you have to go back in time to rescue her. Um, we also see in the design works before the release of the DLC that one of the unused designs in the game was in fact the Artorius boss design of him being corrupted by the Abyss. Kind of funny, huh? Artorius was almost just a nice little novel uh, cut design without even his name labeled on it inside a art book. Very funny how we dodged a bullet there. Again, the wild popularity of Dark Souls allowed D DLC to get greenlit after the fact, and then eight months later, we saw that DLC come out. So, very cool. Do you plan to reverse hauling so that you can summon Beatrice for the butterfly? Uh, I don't think so, because the... Uh, I may reverse hollowing just so we can... Sh can see her though yeah i just don't know if i want to deal with the extra health for the butterfly but then again it's the butterfly so like oh wh why do i have this i don't need you ay 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 stop auto equipping game God, that's obnoxious. There we go. We're almost there, chat. 
Uh, now that we're here, we can actually uh, do the thing with the frog ray. Let's do that. Frog ray, frog ray, come on up, boy. Come on, frog ray, woo! -hoo! Come on, come on, boy. -o. I love you. Come on, come on. Aren't you a little cute frog ray? Yay! Come on, adorable little frog ray. You, yeah, yeah. So as we can see, Frogway sort of just waddles in here, but then when he gets on water, he starts gliding. Ooh. Now he also has a unique attack while he's in the water. Let's see if we can force it. Go on. Oh, ow. I think I have to be close by. Oh, there we go. There we go. As we can see, the frog ray is designed to take contaminants in the water. Or perhaps the water is the contaminant. contaminant and uh, filter it out in order to belch it out like you would any other vomit. So, very neat little idea. I can't remember if this poisons you or not. I think not. I think it's just uh, nasty stuff. But again, gives you the idea that even this relatively clean water, it takes a bunch of the contaminants in it. So that way it can absorb it through the body and filter it out. Cool. Thanks, Frog Ray. And there's the... Gr it's Green Blossom. That's what they call it, right? Gonna have to look up a time lapse of that tree moving, lol. Yeah, you have to. Uh, that guy almost made it out with the ring. Someone cast Tranquil Walk of Peace. Clearly, Ellie. Uh, the extra HP is easily offset by the fact that she has ranged attacks. That's very true, actually, Scanty. So maybe we'll, we'll do the summon for that. Because I think you have to summon her for uh, for the second part of her thing. So, Loki, when it comes to fantasy RPGs, do you have a class you usually pick? I asked Sophie, and she uh, and she said she usually picks Cleric slash self heal. I usually pick uh, Pyromancer. Loki is going hollow. Okay, this makes me question, why didn't they put water in their arenas? Who the hell would do that on purpose? <laughs> so frog rays are in this game, are this game's crabs? Yeah, in some ways, yeah. Yeah, it, it's very it's very crazy that you have this really cool, neat, unique stuff, and you're probably never going to see it. Because, like, there's one frog ray, no water there, and another frog ray, a uh, bunch of frog rays down there, but they jump out of the water. So, like, yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> All right, guys. This, uh, this should do it. There we go. Alright, so we'll reverse hollowing and we'll do the thing with Beatrice, and then we just gotta kinda dodge roll until the, the Moonlight Butterfly decides to play. Actually, do I have a better shield for, uh, for magic? This, this, this does, it's super heavy though, and I don't know if I can do it, but, yeah, I don't have the strength requirement for this, huh? Yeah, no way, no. Uh, let's actually, uh, look at the item though, since we can. Again, Mossy, because it's been a long time, uh, used by the Guardians of Darkroot Garden, the Stone Knights. The Stone Knight is a creation of old magic, so again, a golem. And this shield is imbued with the same power, but it's also extremely heavy. So the idea that, again, we have old ancient magic being used on these to create these golems. Hey! Woo! Ah, uh, one more in strength. So we'll have 20 strength, and then we can figure out what my stats are going to be from there. Because I still haven't found a weapon I'm, like, super sold on. I would like another dex weapon. That I really like, but we'll have to see what we get. We are going to be... Oh, let's do the reverse hollowing. Oh, whoopsie. Alright, we reverse hollowing. We're going to run all the way here, summon Beatrice, and get into the fight. Pyromancer, nice. I uh, think that's why you got so interested in Isla's slash demons. Um, no, not necessarily. That's completely unrelated. My my love for Isla stems from just them as a culture and a society. Like just it's just a cool, neat little piece of the lore that's kind of very much ingrained in the 
the world building of Dark Souls specifically. Like, there's not quite a culture quite like it. So I think that's where my love for uh, Isleth really comes from. I also really like the characters, obviously. Quelag, Qu uh, Fair Lady, um, Quelana, like, all that. Like, all those really help me. Uh, really appreciate it. As we can see, very easy to miss. But we can, in fact, summon her. Now, she has blonde hair. I'll be, again, noting that for later. But again, we can see how she has a peculiar staff, unlike any of the ones that we, uh, that we uh, can obtain so far. And again, a stereotypically witchy outfit. All right, let's go, girl. She doesn't have a good shield because, again, she's a witch. She probably just picked up the most, uh, the first one she could find, and it was probably not very good. We get it, Loki. Step on me, spider mommy. <laughs> Step on me, spider mommy. I, I, I love Quaylag. She's she's a total bitch, and I love her. Like, she's a she's just, ah, uh, she's just a great character. I love her a lot. Uh, is this the crest of Ulysseel on the shield? It looks similar to that symbol on the lift to New Londo. Uh, which shield are we talking about here? Uh, this one? Let's open this. Whoop. Uh, no, it is not the New Londo crest. something a little different but you can uh you can always uh think about it actually yeah i'm just gonna two-hand this actually well i can't do this right so like no fine I feel like I forgot how to... I thought you just had to hold it down, but apparently I'm just bad at this. Whatever. It's fine. We'll just do this and dodge roll. Okay, Beatrice, you ready? Uh, Beatrice. Be thank you. Uh, Beatrice. You, you, you have to be behind me for this girl. Oh my god. <sighs> Beatrice, stop! Okay, fine. We're gonna get off. And then you're going to let me climb the stairs first. Blonde hair and model, but dark hair in concert art and lolly version. Yes, very true. She had dark uh, purplish hair in concert art and lolly version, but she has blonde hair here. And this will be, again, relevant for later. Uh, Stone Shield. Is there any reason why Gwendolyn and the Moonlight Butterfly share the same theme song? Uh, besides, a, besides a loose connection to Seath for, uh, Seath for both of them. Uh, sorry, for both of them. And I was a little Japanese there. Uh the <laughs> woman move your fat ass <laughs> anyway uh besides a loose connection to seath and moons uh no not really there's no particular reason i think they just didn't want to create another boss theme or maybe they ran out of budget all right through the fog which they strangely call white light now again as you can see butterfly Up. Gotta go towards it. There we go. Oh. Dang it. I gotta block that if I can see it coming. Oh my gosh. There we go. So it comes down for a little bit, gathers up its energy, and boom. Yep, I know the feeling. I know the feeling, Beatrice. Oh, uh, Beatrice. No, here. Moonray! Ow! Go on, Beatrice. You can, you can do this for me. Dang it. That's way too fast. There we go. And there we go. 
Now, Moonlight Butterfly, of course, as we will learn here. For, I think this is our first boss soul, too. No problem there. The Moonlight Butterfly is a creation of Seath. Now, the term here for creation is also the same term we'll see in more religious contexts used for, like, a creation of God, which is very relevant in the context, of course, of Seath going forward. But point is, is that we have the idea that it's a creature which, again, just kind of flitters about in the, the Darkroot Garden. Uh, the reason why it is in this area, we'll see going forward, is uh, because there's more than just the butterfly here. Now, again, I talked about it before. This is clearly a fort, which we are entering. We can see Undead Burg, tops of the towers over there. And we can see that there is another fortified structure here. Makes sense for these stone knights here, giving the idea that, again, soldiers are sort of stationed in this particular part of town. Uh, Beatrice doesn't have much in the int department, does she? I guess not. Uh, nice aim, Beatrice. Yeah, she did good. Because, because they're both beautiful. <laughs> Gwendolyn and Moonlight Butterfly. Fabulous. Nothing wrong with a little bit of friendly fire. It's friendly fire, after all. Does make you wonder if the Pilgrim Butterflies from Dark Souls 3 have a link in some way, or if the Butterflies in Lordran are like our real-world version of their evolved into crap? Uh, Pilgrim Butterflies are related to um, the Pilgrims of Londor in Dark Souls 3, and that's a complete, they're completely unrelated. Uh, the Butterflies in Dark Souls 2 are distant descendants of the Moonlight Butterflies, though. Butterflies also link to death if Bleach taught me anything. <laughs> yeah, um, butterflies are obviously have a lot of symbolism there. Uh, they can also be symbols of rebirth, too, in some contexts, so. Anyway, we are now inside this fort. And what do we find here at the top of the fort? Come on. There we go. Except um, the blacksmith. So... As you guys may recall, Andre mentioned that there was a uh, cleric blacksmith, or as the localization calls it, a divine blacksmith in this area. He apparently had settled into the Dark Root Garden, and as we can see, he was doing his smithing stuff. People would come to him if they wanted to go to the catacombs, because he could make holy weapons. He seems to have uh, stayed far and away from the undead burg for obvious reasons, considering, like much like Andre, he settles up in an area that's a little away from all the hollows, kind of isolated in ruins, so... Not a shocker. He went a little deeper in. But unfortunately for him, it seems like he met with the butterfly. Now, I say that, but you guys may notice that this guy here looks like a statue. He, in fact, looks like Andre as a statue. Um, again, Miyazaki has confirmed in the, uh, I believe it was the Design Works interview, that uh, this means nothing. Ignore this. It's just a, a represent. It's a vessel for the... Uh, for the ember item that we are going to collect from here. See? So, all that, on a homeward bone. So again, clearly a, uh, clearly a, uh, he is undead. He is a blacksmith. Uh, he's clearly faithful. See how he prays. So he's someone who's very loyal to his gods of the way of white. However, uh, as we learn here. Here we go. So again, uh, ember required for the, uh, divine embers are the property of the church. So again, belongs to the way of white intended for the cleric blacksmiths. Uh, now the idea of these divine or holy weapons are for the undead hunts again. So there's this idea that holy weapons are particularly effective against undead. We don't ever see this manifest in game for obvious balancing reasons. So obviously PVP would just be filled with holy weapons if they got like a 30% buff or something. So, um, instead, we only see it used against the other type of enemy that won't stay dead. The living dead of the catacombs that we'll fight there. The ones that are servants of necromancers. But, as we can see here, there's the idea that, um... Uh... The, when the English says and it's intended for divine blacksmiths, it should be understood that all the embers can be read as referring to a specific person. So, it could be read as, it's for the, um, cleric blacksmith. But what the Japanese does is they add a but dot 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 to kind of give us the idea of, oh yeah, we can't go to the cleric blacksmith because, uh, well, he's like this. So what instead we have is a case where the, uh, 
this uh, this guy clearly has died. Now, why is he a statue? Again, like Miyazaki said, it's just a vessel for embers. Don't pay attention about it. He looks like Andre. He's a statue. There's no deeper meaning here. They just they apparently needed a model for a blacksmith corpse, quote unquote. And this was all they had at the time, and they didn't apparently want to take the time or resources to make sure that uh, this could be fixed. So, one second, the dog seems to be getting jittery. Damn dog gets his stuff stuck in places and then expects me to bail him out every time. And then I do so. I'm an enabler, chat. I'm an enabler. Um, uh, poor Andre twin. A basilisk got him. Yeah, yeah, Scanty. Basilisk just kind of came climbing up the walls and just was like, poof, just sprayed some of that petrification gas right on him. Maybe Andre was the divine blacksmith and he faked his death by building a statue of himself. Fifth dimensional chest with me is like, I guess if the game had more budget, they make it a unique blacksmith corpse or something. Yeah, that's probably what would have happened, right? They probably had this. Maybe it was for something else. Maybe they had an idea of like, oh, we're going to meet a blacksmith down in the depths or something with the basilisk or whatever, right? And then they ended up moving that around because that didn't work out, right? Like, we don't know what happened in development at various points that could have caused this type of stuff. All we know is we have this thing. There's no real explanation for why every blacksmith corpse we find is a petrified statue in the same exact pose that happens to look identical to Andre. So again, this was probably just their best effort of being like, okay, how do we represent that this belongs to a blacksmith? Okay, we'll have him have his shop surrounded by tools. We'll make it Andre's model and it'll be this statue thing while he's in prayer to show that he's loyal to the gods. Uh, I guess if the game had, uh, ma makes you wonder why they didn't just put a corpse model instead of a fancy one or a chest. Yeah, it does make you wonder. But again, apparently they really wanted to make it clear that this belonged to a blacksmith. It wasn't just a random corpse who might have picked it up. Again, did they have to do this? No, but, um, FromSoft and corpses are weird. Same thing happens in Bloodborne. There's a lot of time where there are corpses that are very specific to specific characters, like a church hunter or a random Yarnum citizen or something. But the items they have would belong to other stuff, or it couldn't belong to, say, this character, or the implication is supposed to be it's supposed to belong to other types of characters. Again, they have limited resources. Only so many corpses posed in so many ways that they can place around. I, under I, I understand. I understand that sometimes it's not all uh, sunshine, shine, sunshine and rainbows. Now, we did get the... Is there anything we want the Moonlight Butterfly's soul for? Um, there's just the shield, and the shield doesn't matter. So basically, all we learn from this soul and the weapons we can get from it is that the shield, the horn, is uh, has pure magic damage, does pure magic damage because it's a, uh, it seems to be some type of uh, receptacle. So it's almost like an antenna being used to help gather that moon power into the disc on its back, that then uh, collects into the head. So again kind of see how that all works out so it's like it goes from the horn down to the head into the disc and then sort of spreads throughout the body we can assume but um we get this idea of it using the moon to absorb magic or just absorbing magic power such as from the moon which again that's an interesting concept in itself uh but the uh the other idea of course is that the uh, the the shield where it can summon like rings of light and things like that with the uh, with the shield you can derive from that and also relate to crystals and stuff like that which are all of course uh, part of Seath's research and likely involved in the butterfly's creation so we'll talk about more as we get more boss souls and stuff until then let's use our homeward bone to go all the way back because I do not want to make the trek I'm lazy chat I'm lazy Yeah, the corpse models in Kanehurst are just as confusing. Yeah, again, it's just one of those things where, uh, in my opinion, most of the time you should just ignore what the corpses um, are. Like, the only thing in Dark Souls 1 that's really relevant is, is the corpse male or female? Because if it's female, that can tell you specific stuff about the the character of who has it, why they have it, etc. Everything else is really irrelevant. Uh, there's the shield and the spear, both, yeah, weapons are trash, yeah. And I think you can read their lore from the blacksmith uh, anyway. Uh, is that if I keep the the soul, or so should I keep the soul, or should I just get rid of it and it won't matter? True, true, and true. Loki, is it true that it's not nighttime in dark room? It's just the abyss fog <laughs> obfuscating the sun. Uh, sure, Scanty, let's go with that. Uh, uh, if you're if that's a serious question, uh, no, it's likely is actually nighttime here. Uh, Dark Souls plays very loose with uh, well, all the Dark Souls games pretty much before Elden Ring uh, play loose with time of day and stuff. 
for obviously they're concerned more about setting the tone for the area rather than it makes sense. Obviously, it's like daytime or like midday or whatever in uh in like Undead Burg, and then we like go go through a church. Presumably, they want you to fight the Titanite demon. So let's say you go through a long uh, perilous fight against the Titanite demon and kill him, and then oh hey guys, it's nighttime, right? Um. But obviously, you can just rush through here, and it's like you can go between day and night instantly. Um, the game, the, the Miyazaki's never, until Elden Ring was never able to get the developers to implement a proper day night cycle for these games. Um, that's always affected, been one of his dreams that he got to, uh, uh, see realize. Uh, we shouldn't take any idea of like, oh, it's nighttime here, but it's daytime here, blah, 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 blah. It's generally speaking, what we see for the rest of the game outside of Darker Garden is that we go from like more, we go from like early morning to like midday to eventually afternoon and possibly night if you do certain events in certain areas. Yes, it's a serious question. I've always thought that it was the case, especially because the moon in there looks nothing like a moon with no craters and stuff. Uh, this is just art style. You may also notice there are no stars in the sky. Um, this is true for all the Souls games until the very last DLC of Dark Souls 3. But the game, but uh, Dark Souls 2 and stuff confirm that the stars do exist and things like that, and they are in the sky. It's just an artistic, it's just an artistic design decision. So yeah, it's all it's all just artistic license. Don't take any of that too seriously. I guess they were just trying to emulate a day-night passage. Yeah, and they were trying to do that in, like, a very broad sense. But like I said, their focus is always on what's the feel of this area that we want to get. So they won't let, like, they won't let stuff like, hey, does it really make sense for us to go from, like, daytime area to nighttime area so fast? They don't really care about any of that. Sorry if you hear this dog. He's going a little crazy. The flow of time is convoluted. Yeah, Ivan, don't make me uh, go. Don't make me go wild if I have to hear that stuff every single time. Uh, this just confirms that Dark Souls exists within the fourth dimension, where time is paused at a certain point in the day. Math give. <laughs> yeah, guys, let's uh, let's try to let's try to overanalyze this. Anyway, I'm gonna use this item. If we can't find the the stuff from the giant blacksmith, it's fine. I don't mind. Oh God, this soul isn't even. Wor it's only twelve. It's worthless. It's worthless. This dog, he wants me to throw balls while I'm playing and streaming. Crazy. Mad dog, I say. Mad dog. Okay, we can get one more level up now. Uh, wow, I didn't even need to use the Moonlight Butterfly thing. I just got, like, extra souls now that I could lose. Uh, let's see. Let's go this way. Oh, we also got the key. Let's look at that. Because today is going to be Havel, it seems like. Uh, master key, mystery key. There we go. Watchtower basement key. So this is the, the, the bottom of the watchtower. Uh, the lower stratum of the watchtower. Uh, so again, the idea is that this tower is being now used as basically a prison cell. Essentially, there's the idea that there are, uh, there's the idea that it's said that a hero, quote unquote, now hero, of course, has the idea of someone who's big, strong, and brave, someone who's willing to, who's willing to go out there and fight and has been very successful in the past, but the person is clearly undead and they ultimately hollowed. And because they hollowed, a, fr a, a friend essentially had locked them in the tower there so they could be trapped in there and that would be their prison as a hollow. Um, the localization sort of has this for his own good, of course, and there are rumors and all this stuff like um, tries to make it sound all like sus. Believe me, Japanese is nothing like this. It's very plain. This is something you'll see a lot in Dark Souls 1's localization, especially the localizers love to add their little flourish to it. And it almost always makes the makes things sound a lot more deep and mysterious than it really is. The divine blacksmith has the key so we can infer that he is the friend who locked up this uh, hero in the watchtower we will later see who that hero is of course but the the general gist is that uh his friend hollowed he locked him up in there and perhaps out of guilt perhaps because he just wanted to avoid if even his friend is hollowing who's a hero then he uh what hope does he have uh so he just decides to isolate himself in that fort for protection obviously the moonlight butterfly flies and is like ah nah bitch <laughs> you gonna die Stagnant. Hey, Beltoy. Havel, quote, quote unquote. It's like, quote unquote, Havel. Uh, this just confirms that Dark Souls exists within the fourth dimension where time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Just every time I read that 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 message, Ellie, I'm just like, God. I actually think that's the only soul that Frank will eat for more than it's worth. 
Pretty sure Frank gives you like 5k for any soul except Smo. He gives you one soul for Smo. Yeah. Smo is. Yeah. Uh, Framped doesn't like Smo. I should have saved it for Framped. I wasted it. There we go. Wasted. Go. And we're good. Look at that. I, lo I love it, too, because, like, you already have the trees here, but for some reason they want to hide the fact this lower area exists and you can drop down into it. So they add this really muddy, square tree textures to block your line of sight. Like, what? Who thought this was a good idea? And obviously the lake's, like, right over here. So, yeah. Anyway, we go this way. I love how we have more water up here than where the frog rays could use their special abilities for. Again, we can see how Undead Berg is here. Oh. There we go. So we really get a sense of uh, the place. We also look down and see uh, a ravine. As you can see, there's a bridge on the top of my screen by my health bar. That is the bridge to New Londo that we uh, will see there. Also, pay attention to how there's a giant rock wall parallel to that because uh, that will be relevant for later. You actually do what I call uh, souls tax evasion with dung pies. You can buy them for 200 souls and sell them for 200 souls. So if you don't want to lose souls, you just buy dung pies. That is actually, uh, that's actually really, really clever, Ellie. Or no, Scanty, sorry. I really like that. That's really cool. Souls tax evasion. You want to buy my moss? No, but could you give me some dung pies? I got some dung pies for you, sir. <laughs> you need to avoid the coppers, huh? Yeah, the death coppers. The curse coppers. Oh, I don't even need to charge it, man. It does it automatically. That's actually even better. I really okay, that makes this even better. So we can really uh, we can really do some damage. All right. Okay, where are you? This time I spy you. I thought I could avoid you, friend, but it seems like I can't. Oh my! Every time. Man, my character was like, I hate. Yeah, when he slammed down that morning star, like, oh boy, I could feel, I could feel that hateful energy spewing. God, don't you love when everything gets really blurry and desaturated when it's all far away? God, Dark Souls' depth of field is absolute shit. Like, oh, it's awful. Dog shit. Oh, I did it again! All right, no more. I'm actually almost at my level up, by the way. <laughs> so that's good to know. There we go. Man, my character has come to really hate the trees, I think. I get that feeling. There we go. Are these foliages the scarecrows from the D DLC gone feral? Yes. Uh, this is why they added Torch in Dark Souls 2. <laughs> burn! Burn it all! Let us see our surroundings. Oh, well that was awkward. I don't, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what happened there myself. Okay. Oh. Alright, so clearly I'm not going to have my fun time looking at new Londo until I get a little lower, so... Where's that crystal lizard bastard? Again, we can see the bridge down from here with New Londo. 
We can, of course, also see the watchtower over here. Now we're going to go from the lower stratum down there, and the upper stratum we've been to when we were going up to face uh, Taurus Demon, so... Now this is, um, this is, uh, again, the idea that this is a dark root basin, so we're still in the Black Forest, but um, now we're in, of course, a River Gorge type of area. Uh, notice how there's rainbow blood whenever we try to kill this uh, Titanite Lizard. It's a crystal lizard. It seems to have Titanite scales or black. Obviously, Dark Souls 3 will later confirm this by showing us what a Titanite scale truly looks like. Uh, specifically when it's devoured souls. But we get the idea that they have dark, uh, scaly skin like uh, Titanite stone. But they are forming crystals. So they're turning the Titanite that they seemingly devour into their hide and produce uh, crystals, which form Twinkling Titanite. So through crystallization, we get the Twinkling, which is uh, very curious indeed. And they have rainbow blood. Again... Um, rainbow, if you recall, we saw prism stones earlier. The term prism stone means seven color stone. This is why it's said to have a quote unquote rare eighth color. Rare can also be read in Japanese to mean like unusual, weird, you know, kind of stands out from the norm, not rare in terms of statistical. People have done the tests. They could not get the different color stones to, uh, to show any difference in terms of when they appear. It seems to be all equally random for all of them. The reason being is because, again, it's not about how rare the other stones is. It's how it's a seven-color stone, a prism stone, and yet it has an eighth color, which is white. Um, so, again, it's the seven colors of the rainbow plus white. That's how the prism stones are supposed to uh, be looked at. The importance of this, of course, is, again, the idea that we have this... Uh, Again, rainbow-colored blood associated with uh, light, uh, white light being split up into the different seven colors, but this one produces additionally a white, uh, separate white light. And then you have the idea of the Titanite Lizard doing something similar with, quote-unquote, its blood. Hmm, what's going on here? And it's related to crystals. Hmm. And what, how does Titanite fall, uh, fall into this paradigm? Hmm, hmm. Much to think about. Now we find a leather uh, set, a longbow, and feather arrows. Now, there has been much made about this. It's just a makes sense to you find a hunter out here in the wilderness of Darkroot, the Black Forest. Very basic. Now, the important thing that people like to focus on is this. These are red feather arrows of the Lord's Hunters. So people make a big deal of this because it's Lords and it's capitalized. Now, as I've said before, the term Lord is the Japanese kanji is king. It is king. <laughs> so these are talking about how these are the arrows of, a, of a hunters of a king. Um, not necessarily the Lords or a Lord or anything of that nature. Just, you know, hunters to a king like ourselves. We could be a hunter background and we could obviously would probably be serving a king because you know kings are the type of people who do like you know the the ritual hunting and things like that for sport and all that type of thing so it's like hey we're the idea is that these are the arrows that a hunter for the king would use in order to uh get the quarry or whatever on the king's behalf and stuff like that so again nothing crazy here no like deeper secret law meaning in this regard uh is there any lore to the Red Ray weird things, TM? Uh, yes, there is, Baltoy. Um, besides being wildlife, they do connect into a, a larger understanding of where water fits in the cosmology. Because as you may have noticed, despite the fact that we have this whole thing on opposites and duality, dark and light and all that, we don't get anything on fire and water. Oh, wait, the dog is complaining. I think he got his thing stuck again. One second. Yep, exactly, Scanty. Localization likes to get fancy with stuff that isn't supposed to be fancy and vice versa. But yeah, the the idea with the... Uh, it's very interesting how we don't have a focus on fire and water. Fire is always sort of l lumped into the light and dark dynamic. So it's very interesting to know where does water fit into this cosmology? I mean, water douses fire. 
water, uh, water, if, light, if fire and its light is time, what does that mean for water and things? This is stuff that we will be exploring more as we go forward with the lore play. Uh, I don't want to talk about it all right now because there's a lot more stuff to look at and talk about to establish before we uh, start having some real fun times. Uh, this should be safe. Yep, it's safe. It's safe, all right. Here you go, dog. This dog he wants to play tug of war with the ball. Man, goldens. Goldens, goldens, goldens. All right. We are about the bottom of the the travel, so we can go to the garden, or we can go further down below. Again, we can see how there's a very, very big valley here. And we shall keep on moving. Oh! A Black Knight? Now, Mr. Black Knight, excuse me while I do this. Just to make my life easier, Mr. Black Knight. Thank you. Uh, we can't, uh, level it yet, right? Yeah, no. I think it needs to be in the 4,000s at this point. Uh, Mr. Black Knight? <laughs> Excuse me? Okay. Grass Crest Shield. Again, this is very useful to know. A shield involving grass. Uh, this might actually be what I want. Ooh, I might actually want this. Let's focus on uh, the Black Knight up ahead here. Oh, wow, that was really delayed. Yeah, we want to come up here so we have some more room to maneuver. Let's try to get a back few backstabs in. go perfect i was about to say that's not a lot of damage but like oh oh come on that was oh come on i'm like i totally have the i swear <laughs> and but that's a backstab okay game sure Dang it. I should not have done that panic roll. Uh, I always feel that Dark Souls 1 is a we just missed the party vibe, that civilization was not that long ago, versus Dark Souls 2 it all feels like a foggy memory. Yeah, that's basically the idea. Uh, uh, most things in Dark Souls 1 are uh, relatively recent. We're talking like 300 years for most major events that the game talks about. Um, everything else is like usually within a 1,000-year period, and... Um, uh, and then everything else is like, oh, it happened way, way, way long ago. It's mostly, like, vague, very general stuff. Like, a lot of stuff does happen there, but it's over a very wider, broader period. Like, most of the, most of the like, specific stuff is relatively recent history. Don't make me pull out the shit. I should have gone for the backstab there. I didn't expect him to not follow me. Okay. The Grass Crest Shield is, like, the only shield worth equipping, so yeah. Like, I'm honestly, yeah, considering it. Like, 95% damage reduction is decent enough. And you get the extra stamina recovery, which is super... Oh, wow, you just... Okay. Wow, that spin around. Come on, get up here. Come on. I don't know how that missed me, but whatever.
Oh, okay. Oh, well. <gasps> well. Uh, that Aldrich guy must have understood more than most for the well, the Western lore hunting community, apparently. Uh, the Grass Crest Shield is like the only shield worth equipping, so yeah, Heater Shield is my favorite, 100% physical for only two pounds, yeah. Heater Shield could also be neat, neat but uh, we'll see. I really want to get this Black Knight, because I don't know if I've killed a Black Knight yet. Maybe I've killed one, but I don't remember. I really want to get uh, another one killed, though. Yeah, we cool? We cool. I would like to get a backstab off, but... It seems that after my first attempt, I suddenly got bad. I can't do backstabs anymore. For shame. Go on. Oh, that's... That's a... Oh, come on! I'm messing up all my timings now, so you know what? Fine. We won't deal with you. We'll just run. <laughs> ah! Apparently, I have to, like, kill these things in three hits because I'm so bad. I can't beat damn Black Knights, one of the easiest backstabbable enemies in the entire game. I'm so bad. No, we don't want to go this way. Maybe I should block uh, this guy because he is a spear wielder. I might be able to maybe get some deflex off, but it's like, ugh. Oh, okay. Actually. Uh. Okay. Sure, whatever. <laughs> Whatever, fine, I'll ignore you if you're going to be stuck like that. Can't you, like, fall off a ledge or something if you're going to be like that, Mr. Black Knight? Come back, we have eight <laughs> humanity for the 24% chance of best weapon in the game. Besides parrying is the key to not lock on, so you have eight direction roll and then lock on for a backstab. There's our favorite Hydra. As we can see, this area is uh, not crazy. So here's the watchtower. Where is the hero locked in? I don't see him. There he is. Ooh. Sorry, these aren't Dark Souls 3 skills. You can't just add yourself rock armor. I didn't even do damage. That's actually kind of impressive. The 
poise master. Okay, you saw that, right? That was totally not the backstab, but I'll take it. Apparently, they need to be as slow as the Havel Warrior. So, this is a, uh, again, English guides like to refer to this character as Havel, but Japanese guides are more accurate in saying that he is a warrior. Oh, but he kills you in one shot, so that, uh, that explains a lot. So, uh, he's not actually the genuine, quote-unquote, Havel that people like to assume he is. He is just another warrior of Havel, much like how we encounter a warrior of Havel in Dark Souls 2 and another warrior of Havel in Dark Souls 3. Uh, the idea being is that Avil has adherents who like to cosplay as him. There is also, in fact, priests he has. Um, he's not a bishop, like is often uh, placed in... Oh, like is often mentioned in, uh, English, uh, in English item descriptions related to his miracles. He is not Bishop Havel. He the, is the idea that these miracles belong to a priest of Havel. Now, priests of Havel... The idea being is that they have a lesser, uh, they have a, his miracles and cast it in the same way that the warriors learn his, uh, his weapon and fighting style and his armor. So. <laughs> Dagger backstab fishing time. Ooh. That's true. The thing is, will Dagger do more damage if we get all the, the backstab? Uh-oh. What is it, doggy? <laughs> okay, is Black Knight not coming? I'm going to assume Black Knight's not coming and Havel won't come out, so let's just see what the dog's got a problem with today. He's being very sweet. Oh, okay, he just wants some lovin'. It's a travesty that the majority of the community thinks this guy is Havel because of bad translation. I know, right? Uh, so does that make Havel a god, then, rather than an actual person? Uh, I think you mean rather than a human. So, yes, as I've talked about last stream, I use the term medial to refer to the race of the gods versus godhood as a status, because that can especially gets confusing. So... Havel is, was in all likelihood, based on his armor and the backstory we have, the idea being that he is a, a comrade in arms of Gwyn, right? So he's a battlefield compatriot. He was a friend of, on the, in battle to Gwyn. So the idea being is that they fought side by side in the war. Um, he was very likely a silver knight. We can see in the cinematic how when Gwyn is throwing his lightning bolts to hurl at dragons, he's doing so alongside silver knights who are doing the same thing. So we get the idea that Gwyn fought alongside his silver knights. Obviously, some knights raised to be above their station, like Ornstein, etc., and they get their own unique armor and stuff. Havel seems to be one of those warriors who he was just an ordinary silver knight. Then he met Seath, and then he decided he would never get hard countered by magic ever again. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Havel has sort of made it where he creates the miracles that lets him be able to magic barrier, letting, giving him a protective film against all sorts of magic. His armor is solid rock, very magic resistant. Uh, also fire resistant for, uh, against all those, uh, nasty dragon flames and all that. His, uh, weapon is, of course, a dragon tooth. The idea being that he just take a tooth of an arch dragon and just sort of turn the, the, what, the tip into a pommel and then, uh, into a, yeah, pommel and then, uh, or a, a haft or whatever and, like, used it to, uh, as a big giant hammer. So, uh, the, that is who Havel is, and he has warriors and priests. The fact that he has priests gives us the indication that he's a god. Was he a god already before then? Again, it's very vague because we don't really get any idea of the knights being called gods. Um, and, uh, so you can make an argument that they aren't based on how the idea that the gods abandoned in Orlando, but obviously the silver knight stayed behind. So, there's this, there is, there, there is an argument to be had. Now, the idea being is that Havel, being a silver knight, has all these human warriors who are adherents of him, 
and he has these human priests who again are other also adherents of him the priests learn the miracles they spread the miracles the warriors uh spread the idea of cosplay <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, so Gwyn X Havel still big, okay. Uh, the, the fact that he lived alongside Gwyn and would it make sense for him to be just a hollow? Yeah, it doesn't make sense for Havel to be a human because, one, the closeness to Gwyn on the battlefield, especially given Gwyn's uh, concerns about the dark and all that, just general medial treatment of humans. Um, and it, it doesn't fit Havel's long lifetime because you have to think about it. Havel's someone who fought in the dragon hunts. He's been alive for a very long time, if we're to believe he's alive even today. He can't be human, then, which means he can't be a hollow, because the undead curse is unique to humans. Um, so, again, like, everything... By all indications, he is likely a medial, uh, who became a god... At least became a god after uh, making a name for himself in the dragon hunts for his unique uh, unique obsession with, uh, with uh, getting his ass beat by Seif. All right, we're going to fish for backstabs. Uh, do the Japanese call them white knights to fit with the white black knights? Uh, no, they're called silver knights. Ah, dang it. I, I can't look away during that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have to not look at chat when I do this fight. It's just too, too much room for error. So is it likely that Havel still persists to Dark Souls 3, considering he still has disciples? Uh, yes, it's possible. Um, it's hard to say because obviously his adherents, quote unquote, never fall. They just keep on doing what they're doing. But it's hard to say if Havel is still alive because, again, you could worship your god even if your god is gone and or dead. Um, see, like, for example, Gwyn's firstborn, uh, who has his following even though he's obviously doesn't see most of his followers anytime. And obviously we can kill him at any point. So you can obviously have the idea that, um... Just because you worship the god doesn't mean the god may be still around. We don't really know what Havel's fate truly is, honestly. The All indications in Dark Souls 1 here, especially considering that he's friends with the cleric blacksmith, this warrior of Havel, and other indications, as we'll see going forward, is the implication that uh, Havel has become... Um, Havel and Lloyd are working together in Dark Souls 1. But then what that tells us beyond that is not really much. Oh, we got another phone call, too. Gosh, chat, so many distractions today. One second. Ah, oh, never mind. It's just a random spam. Damn spam callers. It'd be interesting if Silver Knights, etc. were not medials or gods at all, more like golems like Automata. Unique obsession with getting his ass beat by Seed. Um, you could make that case, but that seems incredibly unlikely with how the knights function generally. Like, uh, they function a little too... Yeah... I don't think that, would, again, especially if Havel is himself a Silver Knight, I don't think, uh, with the way that they, uh, treat him, I, I have my doubts. I think they're just, uh, medials. Uh, unique obsession with getting his ass beat by Seath, Loki 2022. I, uh, I'm just saying. Wait. Wait, really? Isn't the Japanese name for Silver Knights just the White Knights? No, it's Silver Knights. It is Silver Knights. So it's Black Knights and Silver Knights. So yeah, it is silver. Why it's silver, um, we will talk about that when we get to Anna Orlando, because there is actual good lore justification for why uh, that medal is used. Uh, so you guys are right. Better just not do the lock-on if I'm not going to fight him legitimately. Make it too easy for me, buddy. Uh, Havel? Uh, Havel? Uh, Havel? His AI had a bit of an oopsie there. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta lock on if I'm gonna do that attack because, oh boy. Oh boy. When you play with fire. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm trying to do the the guard breaker attack, but no luck. Oh 
my god, now he's now he's serious. He's like, I'm in phase two of my boss. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh! Oh, that was close! Oh my god. Havel, stop making this so obnoxious. There we go. Okay, we're going. Oh! We're going up here. We're going up here. We're going to level two. Oh. That wasn't really the plan, but okay. I can't do plungings on enemies for some reason. Oh. Come on. Go on, Bucko. Dang it! Woo! Whoop. Oh god, thank god he didn't, like, do a full turn. I don't think I had enough room there. Oh, okay. He's almost there, chat. Honestly, if I had, like, throwing knives equipped, I would probably just use those. Come on. Come on, buddy. There we go. And dead. Didn't even need the backstab. Perfect. Yeah! Havel's ring! Best ring in the game, everybody! We can boost poise, and we can boost, uh, Havel. Yeah. Yeah! Uh. Leto is a Silver Knight in Dark Souls 3, so at least he wouldn't be a golem. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't think it, the golem might, the angle works. Uh, quality Dark Souls 1 gameplay. Uh, oh, that's a good point. It was just a thought they could be golems because I had uh, Dark Souls 2 on the mind in the statement the gods left in, uh, in Orlando. Uh, yeah, there's only one knight I know who is a golem, and uh, yeah, we only learned that in Dark Souls 2 as a result. But yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a discussion for in Orlando, huh? And, and Orlando, Florida. Uh, you can safely kill him by running up the stairs, then dropping down naked so that he takes fall damage. That's actually an interesting uh, strategy, Sneed. I like that. Plus, if Gwyn is meant to be like a Zeus figure, he had created life to serve him at points. Uh, I The thing with the Zeus thing is that Gwyn is the leader of the gods, and he throws lightning. I think that's the extent of him. Same thing with him being connected to Thor and stuff because of Koth, Jormungand, and all that, the world serpent. Um, I think that's the angle. Hal's ring is so insane. 15 increased to whip, uh, equipment load. Equip the grass crest shield now, Loki, before you forget. Oh, that's very true, Scanty. We have to talk about the grass crest shield. So the Grass Crest Shield doesn't really give us. It just tells us it's an old medium metal shield of unknown origin. The idea being is that the crest has magic in it related to grass. We have the idea there's a connection with nature and thus power uh, with magic that increases stamina recovery speed, giving you more ability to move. Now, while it says unknown origin, again, much like how Dark Root Garden is never explicitly referred to as Ulysseal, I believe that this shield and the the ruins, of course, are all connected to Ulysseal. So I think we unknown origin is now known. Anyway... Now let's deal with that Black Knight. Oh. 
Okay, guys, I beat the I beat the boss for this area. Ooh, Dark Root Basin boss, man. Super tough. Like, how was I even supposed to deal with that? I mean, that guy, like, Havel? Like, oh, boy. Now we open this. Yeah. Now I can come in here. Woo! Good job. Thanks, guys. I knew I could do it. I knew I had it in me. And now I have poise. The shield, Loki. All oh, right, got to equip it. There we go. There we go. I can't wait to get myself killed the first time I use this shield because I have like less than 5% health. Now again, we'll see uh, more crystal golems now. These are, as we will later discover, serving Seath. So again, another connection between crystals Moonlight Butterfly, again, notice the rainbow blood. So we get the idea that Crystal Golems and the Moonlight Butterfly are here on behalf of Seath for some purpose. I can't remember if these petrify you, but... Ooh. Again, Crystal Golem summons crystals with its... Uh, crystal it crystallizes the area around it with its touch. If it wants to. Rainbow Blood, much like the Crystal Lizard, makes us wonder if the Crystal Lizard might also be related to see. Hmm. There we go. Then there's that ugly mother. That thing. That one we're going to just need a full giant great shield and just, like, tank through it. But, actually, I think I'm going to go into Endurance now, because right now I don't like having so few, uh few stamina. There we go. Oh, you, of course. Dang it! I don't didn't want to do that. I was trying to sprint, but it rolled instead. Darn. Let's try the shield, though, and how it, it handles it once we get my souls, so. I think what I'm gonna... Actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna go for souls. Uh, grab my souls, come back here, rest, and then we'll... Yeah, we'll try that. So this, I don't want this. Okay. So that way, even if I lose my souls, at least it's not all my souls. Hello, boy. -o. Okay, don't have to recover enough frames up there. Again, I have a strategy. I should commit to it. If only we can make this Black Knight fall off the ledge so easily. If only. But alas, this dirty thief does not know the trick to trip. Uh, this should be one level up only, right? So we want to put it into endurance. Only one point of stamina, huh? Oh, it'll get better as we go up, I'm sure. Let's see what you got. That was totally a backstab, by the way. I'm gonna... Yeah, that's a backstab, see? I'm like, there's no way. Perfect. I don't know if I would have been able to make that if I didn't uh, do the thing, though. Oh, okay. I think I was too low. Gotta get on even ground, maybe. Ah, oh, if I backstabbed him from there, I might be able to knock him off. That was close. Oh, of course, you just turn around. Naturally. Well, 
just use the iframes on uh after the shield to <gasps> Okay, I figured out how to do black knights now. <laughs> there we go. Blue tight knight chunk because of the area. We got more, we got more where that came from. Where is that? Oh, right, it's under Titan Knight. So again, the idea that chunks were found in Lordran, this is what led people to start looking for the original slabs. It's like, ooh, the legends are true. If there's these, then there must be these giant slabs of blo uh, blocks of Titan Knight around, Bondstone. Uh, so there's the idea, could there be more? Obviously, we'll prove that they do, in fact, exist. Um, before we head over to beat other black knights in the area. You might fast roll if you remove one piece of armor. Ah, oh, never mind, you're fast rolling already, just defended strafe. Yeah, that's what yeah, that's what that's what I figured out. Just just literally blocking makes this makes this totally viable. Uh how much for level up? I might be able to use my Nah, I can't. Okay. Alright, let's first Head down here. Now, again, what did I say about the uh, valley? Notice how there's a giant rock wall parallel to the uh, to the the valley down there. Well, we can see, of course, the same architecture for New Londo is here. So you get the idea that this was likely a path that connected New Londo to Ulysseal once upon a time. Which is very much makes sense, as we will be seeing. Yeah, chit, yeah. Come here. As we can see, we are now at New Londo's gates, but the Valley of Drakes, or Wyverns, as I've said before, as you can see, these Wyverns are identified by the fact that they don't have front legs necessarily. Those front legs have fused with their wings, essentially. These blue Wyverns are unique in that they shoot lightning instead of fire, which seems very unusual considering lightning or sunlight seems to be their antithesis. You would think. Now, I'll be honest, I don't expect to beat this thing. As we can see, though, this entire valley is covered in these types of enemies. Protecting them. We can see how there was a bridge, though, to the new Londo main gate. Whoop. And then this, which seems to have led out into the world of man long ago into wider human society has been blocked off by dirt and rubble in order to make sure that no one could enter here and come to the bridge. The wyverns, though, are incredibly suspicious then, because why are they here? And why do they use lightning? Hmm. The only other thing we've seen use lightning is the, uh, the Titanic demon. Hmm. How to connect cities in Dark Souls universe. Roads, long elevators, and small corridors. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, one last thing I wanted to talk about, because we were talking about the, the valley parallel the bridge. Again, keep this in mind, what we're about to see. Thank God this front lift is fast. Oh. Fun times for Loki. Guys, where's the dark roof basin path? Uh. <laughs> yeah, so, uh. Just wide open valley in the middle of the day. That path to Darkroot Basin that we just took a lift down from. Absolutely missing. <laughs> oh, whoopsie. That's fine. I want to do stuff anyway, so. Again, we're back up. There should be this open valley here, but it's nowhere over here. Because as I pointed out earlier, there should be no open valley. There's supposed to be a rock wall to Darkroot Basin that we climbed down the path to. But, uh, <laughs> that does not exist here. <laughs> it's just, uh, this rock wall? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't exist. You know, time is convoluted, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, the, the developer, again... When Miyazaki has a vision for how he wants an area to look, he does not let things like consistency uh, bother him. 
This is one of the uh, more obvious mistakes in the uh, the way that the areas connect and all that. <laughs> Very funny. The lift takes so long that eight hours pass and you don't notice exactly. It looks like it goes fast, but it's actually just taking forever. Yeah, but very funny. Very, very funny. Uh, I just need a little more and I can get this, so. Let's see if I can kill this guy. Uh, it's supposed to be like 5,000 and something, right? Also, again, I find it hilarious that these guys, which take so many more hits than the stone knights, uh, the golems. Stone golems, clearly more valuable than crystal golems. See if, see if he needs to get his souls right. Also, my bleed has not been very useful in this, uh, in this situation, huh? go. I think that might be close to enough, especially if we kill some guys up here. Look at the 3D full map renders a wonder, especially the Tomb of the Giants. Oh yeah, Tomb of the Giants overlaps into New Londo and like a bunch of other places. It's like, oh boy. And don't get me started on that Darkroot Garden Ula Seal map overlay people have done. I've seen it online. I talk about it in Abyssal Archive. We're gonna get to it, believe me. Oh boy, do I have some choice words for the community there. Give me stuff. Oh, uh, we can go through the private residence key and get that stuff. Huh? Oh. 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 There we go. All right, that's handled. We'll deal with Black Knight in a second. First, I want to rest at the bonfire so we have a better checkpoint here. Yeah, a tight night shard. Well, gonna take this, open the residence key, so we go into some one's private home. As we can see, some of these people seem to have visited Darkroot Garden, as we will find golden pine resin. Now again, light powder. Where, where? No, actually not light powder. Repair powder. Do we have any repair powder? Okay, we don't have repair powder yet, so we can't talk about that yet. But golden pine resin has the idea that it emits golden sparks. Uh, allows us to add lightning. We can only acquire this in dark root garden from a certain area we haven't been yet. But again, it's referred to as p literally pine resin or tur uh, uh, turpentine. The idea being, again, same thing like, I think in Demon Souls they called it Turpentine, if I recall correctly. But again, the idea being is that uh, you can uh, use lightning damage, which is very effective against dragons. Because, again, dragons are made of stone, and so to pierce that stone, you want something that really goes through. So a lightning spear is very useful. But, of course, lightning itself, the power of sunlight, has quite the effect on stone, on stone as we will see going forward. I think I can get the level up here, so. Oh. I swear, if I died right before getting my uh, rest, I was going to be a little mad. Just a little bit. Just a teensy tiny wee bit. Well, there we go. Oh my. Come on. Let me kill you guys again. Give daddy a souls. Daddy wants you to pay up. Okay, there we go. This has to be enough. Oh, whoopsie. Golden tree jizz. Drinking game. Take a sip every time Loki says, as you can see, the idea is... You guys, you guys want to kill yourself? You want to get, like, liver cancer or something? 
Uh, yeah, there we go. Now we get start getting two points. Perfect. We start increasing our equip load too with this, which is also nice because I want to do that eventually. Okay. Don't care about you. Oh, that's just awkward. Whoop. Oh, that's really awkward. Oh. There we go. Okay. There we go. There we go. Gwyn sticky gold stuff. <laughs> Gwyn sticky gold stuff. Oh no. Oh no. Not sticky gold stuff, chat. There we go. Let's deal with this guy up here before he causes trouble. And now we can finally uh, deal with our friend, the Black Knight. Again, I don't remember if I killed the one in Parish or not. I've... It's been two days, forgive me. Come into a more open area. Oh. My man just did a full spin. Full 360. Come on. Yeah, now that I can successfully block while uh, while strafing, these guys are easy. We got a chunk. Nice. Hey, buddy. Dark Souls two throws it back. <laughs> at least Dark Souls one throws weak enemies at you. <laughs> Yeah, Dark Souls 2 does throw them back, don't they? Uh, Dark Souls 2 moment, yeah. Alright, uh, what else do we need to, oh, let's, uh, let's upgrade my weapon from here. Uh, not you. Yeah, we want to have more Titanite Knight Shard. I'm gonna want to get that club for to upgrade into a holy weapon, huh? Now that I'm thinking about it, to give to Andre and stuff. Whoop. Perfect. All right, let's uh, let's go do this. Truly a pale shade of the Crucible Knights. <laughs> All right. All right, Hellkite, have you met God? Oh no. I just want you guys to point out, somehow a lot of us survived this. I don't know how. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I don't know how that worked. I'll take it. Um, is this the bonfire we want to light though? Uh, there's nothing really special here, so no. We'll save our humanity. No, we want to deal with you. 
All right. So I don't think I killed the Black Knight up here. So we will see. Where is he? Yeah, there he is. Come on. Yeah, we need to get out of this. I need to actually be able to backstab him. I can't block and strafe if I can't strafe. <laughs> uh, you can just unupgrade a cult club from Sens to a divine club, unless you're planning to do the catacombs before in Orlando. Yeah, I'm not planning to go all the way to get an occult club and then come back for the catacombs. I want to actually do a ca catacombs semi early. I thought I could, uh. Oh, I don't have the stamina. Oh, no. This is a problem, chat. But don't worry. I'll just snap myself into into range. Oh. Well. Yeah, he's all proud of himself. <laughs> he has every reason to be. Uh, turning the Occult Club into a Holy One was always a cool strategy. You can do it with Lightning Spear, too. Just unupgrade it, have it a plus 10 weapon. Yeah, that is neat. Okay, so we're just gonna have to strafe him. No, uh, yeah, he he does too much. He does too much to my uh, stamina bar at present. Ooh, you know what? Oh, I was about to say. Yeah, we're not. I was gonna do it up there, but like, uh, no, I realized there was a problem. He could block my way. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh if I decide I'm gonna uh, uh, upgrade my bonfire just so I can have 10 flasks for this guy. So yeah, shield does jack. Gotcha. Come on. Hello? Mr. Black Knight? Sir? Sir? Are you going to give chase? Come on. Sir. Sir. Please. Come out here. We can have a proper duel. Sir, you can run faster than this. I know you can. Sir. Sir. Dear sir. Come over here. Come on. Oh. He came over here, all right. Now, just don't accidentally do something stupid, Loki, like, uh, like, rest at the bonfire when you got the guy down here already. Oh, okay. I guess we could have the, the Drake take care of him. I guess that's an option. Oh, okay. Come on, over here. Again, the magical spinning ability of these knights never seeks to amaze me. Oh. I gotta dodge. Whoop. Dodge roll every time. Guess no backstab, we're just gonna have to do normal damage. Cause he's pretty slow. But he has a combo. I thought I dodge rolled that chat, but I guess not. Oh boy. Buy a reinforced club from Andre and upgrade to uh, to def uh to define oh divine. It's R two should break down every big skeleton if two handed. Yeah, that's what I'm, pro I'm probably gonna do. I'm gonna buy a club, a great club or a club, and then uh we're gonna use that for catacombs. We might even do that next stream. I might farm off screen to do that. 
just so we can uh, have that all set up because I think you can get it from the uh, from the undead merchant, right? So we can do that, and then uh, next stream we'll do a little bit of catacombs fun. Okay, yeah, this is not working. Yeah, it's not worth uh, waiting on this guy. Let's go here. Uh, it's ugly, but it's in the SL1 weapon of choice for good reason. Yeah, any blunt weapon will do well, especially the Spike Club. I don't know if I can get Spike Club, but I definitely think I can get a, I can get a decent club. Oh my gosh, it can be so... Dang it. Messed up again. I screwed, that was just bad. Uh, in SLL, you can stall a with the Reinforce Club, just attack twice, lol. Try to upgrade your weapon to plus five now, uh, instead of leveling up. Uh, do I, do I have, I need more, uh... Uh, I need more, uh, what's it called? I need more, uh, Titanite, uh, uh, regular Titanite, so I'm probably gonna have to farm that in order to get my weapon up to plus five, and if next stream we're gonna do, uh, Catacombs, it's gonna be going all to there, so. Oh. Almost forgot about you, buddy. I buy enough Titanite to up plus five to a weapon before leveling up at all if I can. Oh, that's right. You can also buy the Titanite, so maybe I can just farm for buying it if I can't get the Titanite I want from the area. Because I think you can buy it from the Undead Merchant too, right? If he sells uh, Titanite shards. That's not good enough. I gotta side roll that. Dang it! No, I can't just do that. We'll do this. Come on. Could have got a second hit in there. Dang it. Perfect. And dead. There we go, guys. I did it. Nice. I got another chunk. So I got some chunks off this. Uh... Getting to the point where, yeah, level ups are not as valuable as uh, everything else. So let's go to the merchant. I think we can wrap up this stream. You only need uh, 10 for to plus 0 to plus 5, but I think you would need 5. You either need 5 or 6. It's tight night now, yeah. Because let's see, what do I got? I got blue, I got some twinkling, I got large, I got chunks. So, yeah. Let's, uh... Is our dragon buddy there? Guess not. Come on. I hear you. <sighs> I heard it. <laughs> okay, chat. I think we're gonna wind things down at this point. Hey, Vens, you, you came at the tail end of the stream. Yeah, very late, but I was able to make it to another one. Yeah, congrats. We, uh, you missed the harrowing journey through Capra Demon, Moonlight Butterfly, um, uh, Havel, or Warrior of Havel, I should say. <laughs> it was, uh, it was quite a, it was quite a thrilling, uh, stream you missed here. Whoops. As you can see, we're, uh, starting to round out, though, the, uh, 
the stuff in the above ground area. We really only have gargoyles left. Whoa, come on. There we go. Oh, whoopsie. Sorry, buddy. And soon, very soon, things will be perfect. Uh, we saved Lotrec. Lotrec, yeah, Lotrec's been saved. Lotrec, who totally won't betray us. I swear, he's a good boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what else do we want here? Oh, yeah, so we can get Repair Powder. Repair Powder is more accurately, um, it's, it's described as a light powder, which makes sense. You can see it's a golden glowing powder. So the idea is that you have this, uh, it's, uh, it's basically this golden light. It's a power with, it is powder with a golden light that's, uh, got magic in it. And again, the idea is that we have repair. In fact, the repair uh, tools that we use takes a block of this, what makes this powder, and we kind of grind it off in order to repair our weapons and stuff. In fact, the as it makes the the need here, the idea when it talks about like it's a precious method of repair on the battlefield as it ob um, obviates the need for a repair box. The point being made is that the repair box has very quote unquote like weak or fragile uh, repair powder, which apparently means we can't take it with us. Unlike this repair powder, which is apparently really good. It can actually, uh, you know, stay alive long enough for us to take it around. Anyway, that's the last thing here. I got to organize this box and stuff. We'll do that off stream. Uh, what do we need? Unfortunately, we can't get, uh, unfortunately we can't get a uh, Titanite from him. So darn. I only just realized the similarity between Lotrex armor and the twin set from Elden Ring. Fave set 10 out of 10. Wearing the embraced armor makes me uneasy. There's a reason it's the first armor I ported to Demon Souls. It'll probably look so good in Demon Souls. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys. I think we're going to wrap things up here. It was great to have you guys here for the lore thrill. Again, we're probably going to take a... Uh, we're probably going to continue with the current schedule. I'll try to do this during midday because it seems to be where a lot of you guys are able to come on. It's all well and good. I'm enjoying this... Uh, this adventure. There's my uh, park design. Morning star. Okay. So then, until then, guys, I think we're gonna have to get ready for next time. We're gonna do catacombs, so I'm gonna try to get myself as prepared as I can be for the catacombs before the next stream. So, see you then, club, club, club. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get the, I'll get the club later. Don't worry, guys. Anyway. Uh, I wanted to see if I could get the Titanite for the upgrading my weapon to plus five, but looks like we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to do the club stuff off, uh, off stream sometime. So until then, later. Bye-bye.